be it's a handy, handy alarm. alarm. It may be few, but it tells me that it is exactly seven o'clock. I'll probably hit the button. <laughs> no, no, that's good. good. Oh, we didn't do it again, says Mako. And yeah, absolutely right. What about what about, what about if I, I do, do that? that? Does that, that mean better? better? I, I wait, wait with, with baby breath. breath. No. no. Oh. Mm -hmm. Sorry, still working with. Okay, now we do a test. And lastly, how echoey was it? Oh, good news. Excellent, thank you. That's a fun time, isn't it? All right. Yeah, okay, that's good news. Thanks. Well, uh, as Mega says, damn it, we forgot to do it again. And yeah, damn it, I did forget to do it again. <laughs> I think if you're up after tonight, Mega, I'm going to, and you're up for it, I'm going to ask for a promise. Let's uh, do it today so I don't forget. Um, I can mess about with it for as long as I want, but it does seem to change even if I don't do anything different. Hell yeah. Anyway, happy Monday, everybody. If last week I had multiple days off, and so I worked two days of the week, this week I have zero days off, and it's going to be the longest week in a, in a long time. It's going to feel horrible. Even if, you know, the work itself is pretty good. There's been no calamitous intent today, and that's a plus. Uh, you may hear a Marvel in the background who is complaining a lot today. She's had the benefit of multiple... Hi, Ando, good to see you. Um, Marvel's had the benefit of multiple long walks in the last week or so. Roughly every day. So today she's very sad. She said, no, don't give me about Marvel, and then we have a captain turn up. Hey, buddy. And I mean, it's also that I... I had the temerity, the daring, the... The injustice, the unfair decision of getting a chicken and stripping the flesh and making a chicken roll for dinner for Emma and I, and did not give any to Captain or Marvel, and so they can smell the delicious roast chicken and they have got none of it. So I mean that how could I do such a thing? Oh, well, I'll live. Emma was like, I may go to the other room and cuddle up with Marvel, but there's a cat on her lap now, so <laughs> not moving. Oh, well. I 
had a good time. Peter on their way. Well, I'll tell them they're jerks, so that'll be fun. They're not the kind of nature interested um, terrorist organization I'm actually interested in helping, so, you know. Oh well. <laughs> I mentioned I finished? Yeah, okay, so I finished Rest of the Righteous. Like last week. I don't know if I mentioned it on last... Okay, I did last stream. Whoops. Oh, well, it was still really good. Dude. And that means since I've had slightly more time, I've been back into Final Fantasy XIV, and boy, is that enjoyable. <laughs> um, I'm going to get Monk to level 80 before the next expansion. Just mean I've been looking forward to pillars again, and I'll stop pressing the wrong hotkeys whenever we start pillars <laughs> because it was hard to get out of one set of short keys and common responses of hotkeys to move to the other each each week. What else is new? I guess I don't know. I've been having a slightly quieter day. I can tell you about how I went to the dentist, but in the end, that's not that interesting. <laughs> a dentist can say, "Hey, your teeth are great," and I'm like, "Damn right, they're great." <sighs> they're no longer growing into the nerve, so that's a plus. But it's not super interesting to relate the story of how I went to the dentist today. I mean the. The receptionist was very interested in receiving my advice on what what games they should play on their Switch because they have just started playing games on their Switch in lockdown, second lockdown. And they asked what I was doing this afternoon. I explained I am streaming to you guys. And they did not ask for a link, so that's a shame. <laughs> but I managed to provide decent advice on what to play on a Switch, even though I don't have one and probably will never get one. Whoops. Would chat like that has been a guess as to what is Jimble's quick switch recommendation if he has no idea? Emma, you, you say never, you can buy a switch. You can buy it together, it's not like we don't share finances, but like, <laughs> it would be your console, that's for sure, it's not mine. It's not because I hate it or anything, I'm just, I would not would not use it. it. Again, it took me two years to finish Kingdom Hearts. Um, a game I love, just because it's on a console, not at my computer, where I would rather be. Hey, I uh, buried the lead, which is very funny. Uh, you're suggesting Pillars of Eternity, which is very funny. Um, no, I recommended Hades. <laughs> because of course I'd recommend Hades. But why didn't I recommend the game that I'm actively streaming tonight? Because I forgot it was on the Switch. <laughs> Completely pointless. <laughs> um, it could have been really easy. Oh, like you could play Pillars. It's on Switch. Um, it's really incredibly dense. Have fun. Uh, yeah, I'm on like the sixty-fourth hour or so of playing online for people. Oh, yeah, you can check it out if you want to jump in and watch me tonight. It feels like coming onto them, and I don't. You don't flirt with people when they're in a space where they can't get away from you, like elevators or server stuff. It's just bad. Don't flirt with people who can't get away from you. I'm kind of a druid. You can borrow the switch if you'd like. Yeah, Mecca, you're right. Because pillars would be impenetrable. I, I can't say, hey, what's your stream tonight? It's episode twenty-one. Uh, we're gonna switch a dragon soul with another one. Um, and we've got a lot of weird in-jokes about eating scrolls, so have fun. <laughs> Speaking of that, let's go. Click the continue button. This is the camera uncensored from the two different views I have. Isn't that weird? Killers is weird. Are our in-jokes weird? I say so. Happily weird. Not incomprehensible, which is a plus. <laughs> Fiddle. 
I mean, if we got to level with the fact that we named our hero Slam Shadows, and that is the most normal name we've given a character in the whole streaming channel so far. And maybe I don't want a receptionist to the place that has access to the inside of my mouth in quite a number of circumstances. Uh, to hear the incorrect but hilarious reference that I love feet. That's unnecessary, is what I said. <laughs> oh, piling payday. That's something that's covered. Oh, well. Okay, well, what happened last session? We straight up. Oh, shut up, dead man. <laughs> We went straight down to the bottom of the endless paths of Odd Newer. We got to floor 15, and that was essentially the whole episode. That All right, great. then. And then Mind your step, little thief. And dialogue. We're just, we're just leaving. Quest updated. Kill the monster below. Uh, okay, so I think I went close, too close to its... Um, Yeah, I walked too close to the Adder Dragon Horde. I thought that was a way out of the area. It is not. We're going to load our save. As much as I would like to beat up the Adder Dragon, the chat decided we are going to swap the Adder Dragon Soul with the Dragon Hunter Soul. That is what we will do. That's probably why she said, mind your step, little thief. I'm like, oh, um, I'm just trying to leave. I'm not trying to steal your stuff. But, you know, Dragon being pretty intense about their horde is pretty normal. There we go, let's climb back up. Uh, why is that there? This is pretty important um, because it means you can't leave in combat. If the other dragon is too tough, you can't just have one of your characters run up here and perhaps attack it from range. Okay. Alright, let's get out of here. We will help the dragon. I don't know what a Tamino name is, so you may need to remind me. And you can like monsters better than a human. I don't know. Humans. I don't think it's wrong. I don't think it's surprising anymore. Uh, maybe I'm just too immersed in, in Twitter and Tumblr content or I'm like, yeah, it's, it's a choice. It's just a thing now. Um, but I recognize that sometimes a spade is a spade. I've also played the game before. <laughs> so. I love when games include multiple options to solve problems. I really do. And I sincerely love how that we've met two dragons so far, right? One of them was way more brutal and vicious than the other, the the winter dragon. And when I was like, hey, I'll just show you what the fight looks like, he wrecked I us. Say, I'm impressed. And I think that's pretty important. Great, I, I I like it when powerful creatures are actually powerful and intimidating. Someone who plays on easy a lot, sometimes I don't run into that. But even at the end of Breath of the Righteous, when I was playing at a very easy difficulty, some of the fights were hard. We're beating up really big, important battle or demons. a weird statement, but I kind of like when I'm playing on easy to recognize that if I wasn't playing on easy, it was it would be very difficult. Hail and well met. I failed to drop by and deliver this quest multiple times. So, we're dropping in Nelrin the Wise's head. More bounties? Yes! A couple big names here on here this time around. There's Daroth Grimalt the Vampire, and there's Priest of Crucible Knights after. We also have a bounty here for the Green Death and the fast one from Grandfather's Ibril Well. Seems after a looter. No, tell me about Daros. Daros Krumoth is some kind of rabble rouser, fancy himself a visionary. He has tried killing him before, it didn't stick. As vampires set up some kind of cult in the catacombs with East Copperlain District in Defiance Bay, Dilkul Palace wants him removed permanently. Oh, what's this about a priest? Dwarf and High Priest of Scattered God has been decorating grave sites all over the Deerwood. No idea what he's looking for, but he and his men killed a squad of crystal knights sent to stop him. Now they want his head. Last known sighting was in Ersonwood. 
Okay, what's the green death? The Marquis of Mercy Vale wants the head of Glasdale the Troll, also known as the Green Death. The fellow didn't say what he wanted it for, no, they said he's willing to pay well. Very well. If that suits you, suggest you look for Glas Glasdale in Leah Remen. Oh, who are the grand grandfather's laughter? Song Songsmith Rothka, the Norwegian chanter. She and her associates have been looting in Gwys and Ruins, the grandfather's Ibrel's well, want her to pay for her crimes. And they'll pay us to see it done. Rothka, the camp outside of Clearbarn Realark. Hell yeah, we'll do multiple other bounties. I'm going to do this simple bounty quest for the Crystal Knights because I don't even I think you say, can... I'm impressed. I don't think you even gain rep with them if you do it. So, like, they're not even going to recognize it a thing. Just yes. fine with it. And Golem has got a point. It reduces the amount of money they have. Yeah, cool. You know, I forgot to put the amulet on the Master's hand, so we're going to have to go do that. Whoops. I think I haven't played it yet, and I perhaps won't for another year or so, but I'm certainly going to watch a potentially six, maybe more hour long video next weekend uh, on Cyberpunk 2077. I think it's particularly funny when there were complaints that the, yeah, we'll talk to you, you're a jerk in a moment. You are a jerk to deal, dealing with your um, peasants. Okay, well, I wanted to, all right. <clears throat> I'll read the whole thing because it started last episode. They who work the stars. The grandfather and astronomers who predicted the lover's pride that destroyed Ondra's gift took many of their instruments and notes and hid them out of fear that they might be captured by Aetherians. Decades after the war, the tribes recovered the astronomers' work. Unfortunately, all of the known original astronomers had died and much of their writing was penned in an unknown cipher. The Uvalian Dukes have offered a reward for anyone who can help crack the cipher of the grandfathers. The tribes are reluctant to let anyone look at the notes, but I believe it would be better to share their knowledge and let it remain a secret. We sent Kana. Though backed by the money and spies of two Valian Dukes, Kana had difficulty cracking the Glenfathen astronomer's code. Many of the Glenfathens who initially appeared helpful turned out to be saboteurs who believed the outsiders could not be trusted with Glenfathen secrets. A series of ambushes and difficult chases through Ea Glenfarth eventually brought Kana face to face with a great great granddaughter of one of the Orn astronomers who predicted the Lover's Tide. She threatened to destroy the key to translating the cipher, but Kana was able to negotiate a limited translation of the key astronomical information. In the end, the Valian Dukes were a bit disappointed and they had hoped to learn additional secrets of Glenfarth and astronomy. However, even the information Kana recovered was fascinating to Valian astronomers. Lovely. Grant the spell, teleport someone. Lovely. Beautiful, beautiful cloak. Lord Wingar, a cruel ruler from the north, has arrived at the stronghold. He hopes to gain an audience with you concerning a local rebellion. That's right, we're going to tell him to fuck off. I've heard a lot about you, Lord Slam Shadows. You seem like a man who knows how to get results. I have a matter I'd like to discuss with you if you'll hear me out. I would urge caution, my lord. Lord Wingar has gained a reputation as a man of brutal temperament. Some would call him cruel. You hear the steward's soft-spoken words within your head. Very well, let's hear it. You call your allies together and motion for the petitioner to step forward. Ah, oh, shit, what was I supposed to say about Cyberpunk? Good point. Um, I think it's very funny how there were complaints saying that the police, act, uh, you had to do missions for the police. It was a good way to earn money. And um, the mechanics of which follow the exact exact same mechanics as to how you do missions for gangs on the street and get money for from them. And I think it is particularly funny that the police act in a very similar ear and ear exact way of, <laughs> as opposed to other street gangs in the area. That's funny and very cyberpunk indeed. Good job. <laughs> But I don't want to interact with the police. Yes, well, they are the largest and most powerful gang on the block. And you need money or something. So, what are you going to do? As a ruler of Cade Nua, I'm sure you've seen your share of troublemakers. People determined to tear you down so that you can share in their misery. I've had a few incidents in my land. 
rabble rousing peasants who say, shameful as it is, they've gotten someone out of hand, refusing to work, threatening my guards, starting with nonsense about unfair treatment. Still as if I don't pay them, in any case, I fear they won't back down. The situation will only get worse if I don't put an end to it. Things may get a little messy. I thought it best to consult you on the matter first. I'd like a moment to discuss this with my people. <laughs> of course, of course. Uh, Bwingo steps away out of earshot. Hey, we got two options, both of which are fucking neat. <laughs> Eloth, Eloth, I need you to travel to Bwingo's, uh, Bwingo's keep. Warn the people. Or two, devil, get rid of this guy. Quietly. That's neat as fuck. I love that. <laughs> Why not both? Look, I don't know. Looking at it, we've got one, two, or three. And three is don't do anything about it. I remember last time we had an opportunity to send a party member on a problem-solving scenario like this. Here it is. Like, straight up freed a bunch of slaves and then we killed... And then we imprisoned the person responsible. And that was good. That felt good, too. We can go one or two. But I like them both. I'm pretty sure as soon as we hit one, the other option will be grayed out, and it will perhaps end the conversation fairly quickly. But we've got two votes for warn the people, and we can see if we can kill the guy. Or let the people kill the guy themselves if they get an option. He's got a good point. He may have followers who will enact the plan if he, you know, dies. Doesn't look like we've got any more votes. I'm hitting for one. Warn the people. I shall act quickly. Alice departs. In a stronghold of the game prestige, and Alice will be busy for six days. Motion for your guests to return. So yeah, we can't say, all right, kill him now. Have you come to any decision? Now what do we do, everyone? One or two? One, lie. I don't approve of your brutal tactics, but I'll turn a blind eye this one occasion. Now leave. And two, lie. You have my full support. Go back and beat these troublemakers into the dirt. Couple votes for one. I agree. I might as well tell him he's a dick. Brindwigar opens his mouth to protest, but thinks better of it. He bows curtly and turns to leave, shaking his head. We don't have to pretend, thankfully. That's that. We decided not, and that's how it's gonna go. Please do it. You... you've done it! I felt the change from here. It's as if there was a, a noise, a voice, underlying every sound in the keep, and I had simply ceased to notice. Silence now seems almost strange. You have done what the Earls, their descendants, and hosts of explorers could not. There is nobody left to challenge your claim. You are well and truly Master of Kadnua. We have known that from the beginning, of course. But now, all the world will know and share my pride in your accomplishments. Excellent. So, the quest isn't complete. Right? We haven't done it. But we've done enough to silence the master below. Pretty good. If we straight up just left and ignored the rest of the quest, uh, the dragon would survive for a good long time, eventually drain the Adra completely to dry, and then die of old age this or place, hunger. As beautiful as it can be with the absence of children. This is fully restored. Now, we don't have Alos because he's busy dealing with the rebellion, so I guess we're going to take care of this. Not Durance. We're still annoyed at Durance. Durance is too, too racist for it to go away.
Thanks, Stormbomb. That's exactly right. Lockpick. The steward is very pleased with us. Well, I'm excited for you guys to see Steward in Pillar 2. If you haven't spoiled yourself on the plot twist, you may be excited. If you have, you may be like, wait, how's that work? You'll find out, won't you? Just keep tuning in week by week. Or jumping into the VODs, which is totally available. You can see the VODs on the YouTube link on Twitch. We do love our VODs viewers. They don't get to vote, which means they are at the whim. They are at your mercy. <laughs> but not in the Final Fantasy VODs, because there aren't exactly a lot of choices there. Um, pretty linear, those early RPGs. Why are we going all the way back up here? We need to put the hand, put the amulet on the hand. Game sound, which you should be able to hear, of them just like walking across is pretty interesting. Shuffle, 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 shuffle. <laughs> oh, slam. Have I gone too far? I don't think so. With a vampire. Vampires at 410? Sorry, what? Is that we killed him? We killed him. It's a bad vampire. No. You must gather your party before. Yeah, Tommy, thank you. Level 9? Did I lost it entirely? We're going mad down here. Too many steps down in the deep. Yeah, it's definitely, definitely further down here. Riveting gameplay, that's for sure. <laughs> Traveling areas already completely cleared of enemies. Lost. Also, a bit rich for them to call it the endless paths of Odd Newark. When it's clearly got an end, it's got 15 levels, and that's all. Honestly, I should get him in trouble for false advertising. I'm kidding. That, that is ridiculous. Alright, like you've got a point, no one had found the end. Except a dragon. The way the Vithrak here, the one that attacked us because we went over here too fast, has dialogue option to also apologize for the Vithrak turning on you on your way back up makes me think that you can get past them with a password once and then the next time they're like, all right, we're not letting you pass this time, I'm going to kill you. Oh my god. It can't be. How many levels did we go down last time? What's the thing like head? Yeah. Good lord. Hello. That's the highest level of the endless part of the male male world. Okay, so it's not oh, 
one hand is up and the other hand is much lower. Oh my god. Okay. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. We could now overreact to it dramatically and I would be a regular screaming loud white boy twitcher. Twitch streamer. This hand. You stand at the center of the upturned palm with a dragon directed you to place an amulet. This is amulet on the statue. You place the amulet carefully on the palm. For a moment, nothing appears to happen. Aww. And you look on, the edge gem begins to glow faintly, and then steadily, gleaming like a dragon's own golden eyes. The amulet is warm to the touch. When you retrieve it, it seems to hum with power. Find Felon Road, the dragon slayer. For going to your Twitcher. <laughs> Good wife. Very funny. Very cool. Templates. This place, as beautiful as it can be with the absence of children. Very glad you are pleased, greedy mother. Alright, get out of here. We're off to find a dragon, Slayer. We have to go underneath couple lane, but I don't know if we can. We'll have to figure it out. Anyway, there are a lot of places to go here. I bet it's in the Black Meadow. Oh my god. This is what happens when you play a game once a week. Fat Wiggins, a streamer I admire. He's a very friendly and excitable person. Um... Played through essentially all of Final Fantasy as well. Not all of it. Quite a lot of Final Fantasy. Yeah, Shrine of Galloway. He streamed it like every day for over a year. I think that's incredible. Very cool. A lot of effort. I don't know if I could do that, but maybe easy to remember what the hell I'm supposed to be doing if uh, I stream that frequently. That we can. Got to play Kingdom Hearts the whole series. That was good. Probably be most satisfying to go through like a series if you, you know you I hit my quick save button. It's not even the quick save button right now. Those are the pillars of eternity reflexes I've been talking about losing. Hey, we found Fall on a Road. You gotta see this. Hey, we've had a hidden thing on the altar. Yoink. Cool. What did I promise you? Before I click Fall on a Road. You make it clear. It's gonna mess up the hotkeys. Well, I did. A woman in gleaming mail stands guard before the shrine, her head bowed in thought or prayer. Clasp of a cloak bears the engraving of a dog's head. The amulet rides in your pack, seeming almost to be alive. You feel a pressing compulsion to do as the dragon asked, and place it about the wooden's neck. Hail, traveller. She looks up as you approach, discarding her solemn appearance through a crooked green. Greetings, stranger. I don't see too many travellers out this way lately. Shame, really. You must be fell on the road. I didn't think my name was common knowledge. How's it you know me? I'll talk in the pubs. Could I ask you some questions? Lost the light in the dragon's amulet. That's not fair. Alright, good thing. Fallon Road's browse far, but she nods. Sure, what can I do for you? Okay, cool. The amulet suddenly rides in your pack, seeming almost to be alive. You feel a pressing compulsion to do as the dragon art and place it about the woman's neck. Uh, who are you? Fell on the road with a scorch blade. Perhaps only the scorch blade left these days. I don't know for sure. Lately, they spend more time tending the shrine and hunting drakes. Well, tell me about the scorch blade. Dragon hunters, she smirks. Well, so we fashioned herself. We worked very hard to ensure our pay never, prey never reached that stage. We were a ragtag bunch from the beginning. Started with clearing worm infestations, then began to hunt down the drakes. Members came and went. We earned some pay for ourselves after we helped bring down a full grown dragon. We were glorious in our way, a glorious mess sometimes, but it didn't last. Some of that meant to fill in with the hounds, or the society of the Talon. Me, I, I don't care much for looting old temples, rubbing elbows, and high-born pricks convinced they go in I'm content to hold up our banner all on my own. What are you doing out here? Having a few words with the father of monsters. 
It tends to be a one-sided conversation. Just not a little. I come out here on occasion. I try to keep the shrine clear, clear of branches and the like. Are you here to pay respects? Uh, ask the seeker god's blessing on a hunt? Is there any good hunting out here? You'd think so. I suppose it depends on what you're hunting. Trolls and their kin live, in here, live here in abundance, living off what bandits stumble into the brush. Most of the deer have moved on. More impressive beasts have already been slain. You might have better luck to the southeast. The Searing Falls, uh, I'm sure. I've been looking for you. Oh, I didn't think I was not remembered by anyone. I was like, you know me. Okay. I wanted to go through the dialogue tree first so you can get as much information before it forces us to make a decision. One, two, or three. <clears throat> One. Lie. I have brought you a gift for helping my family with Drake some years back. Two. Throw the amulet round her neck. Three. It's a long story. Let's just say there's a dragon with its mind set on your corpse. She wanted me to find you. We got one vote for one. This is our approach to how we're gonna go with it from here. I'm pretty sure it's also it's gonna be one as well, right? But the game gives you another choice. The chat gets another choice, at least at this point, right? It's only fair. A couple of votes for one and a bit of a quiet night. I assume everyone's having dinner. I'm going to call it at one. Let's press number one. I brought you a gift for helping my family with the drakes some years back. To pan the apple gem over in her hands. This is quite a gift. I fear I don't remember the occasion, but I'm glad it could be of, be of some service. She raises the amulet, lowering it over her head. I hope your family is well. And she pauses, frowning. Something seems to distract her. Her expression shifts, brows borrowing as she listens. It's a flare of light from the amulet, which pulses like a star. Alan Aurora's face darkens, mouth pressed into a thin line as she concentrates. Idiot. You think to buy an alliance with a monster? I'll not be the coin you do so with. I'll lend you here, sycophant, and your dragon as well. She readies her poleaxe and leaps towards you with a shout. It's fine. It's fine. Don't even worry about it. It's gonna be okay. We're just gonna look at this person and go, launch some insects at him, and not even worry about it. Quest. Serious. Me too. Oh, you're gonna get bumped. Bonk. <clears throat> her next blow sends the dragon slayer to her knees. She looks up at you for his undisguised loathing, greeting bloody teeth. You... You don't know what you're doing. Think what she will do with this freedom. The amulet reheaves and twists, and a thick miasma seems to pour out from the heavy gem. Unseen by all but you, it moves towards Salon Road's eyes and face, and you hear her shout of anger as she recognizes too late the renewed incursion. No! She means to rise, only to crumple once more to the ground. You will regret. What else she meant to say is followed up by her strangled cry. Her limbs jerk, fingers spasming. I have the impression of a weak, frail light rising from her body, only to be scattered by a sudden pulsing glow. He was struck with a fleeing sensation of despair, and then a stronger, heady triumph. For a moment all is still. And then Fallon Rose's gaze settles upon you once again. Her eyes gleam a familiar, fiery gold. She looks down at herself with cursory interest and rises smoothly to her feet. I wasn't sure about this, but I gotta admit, now that I have a dragon friend, it's hard to feel bad about it. Dragon? She makes a strangled noise, a growling cough, and then frowning, tries again. Yes, who else? Oh, watch her. You know not the difference. I've felt all these things before, but as through a fog. What small lungs this body has? How quick the beat of its heart? She turns towards you. You freed me. It is no small thing to have a dragon at your side. <clears throat> it is no small thing to have a dragon in your debt. 
Wanting a man called Theos. Can you help me? Yes, I know him. So you are what chases him across the Deerwood. He waits for you in a place called Sun and Shadow. You must be the hound to his heart. Or else you'll find yourself a walking Merewood's path. I've gathered for myself a thousand tales in many years beneath the earth. I'll remember yours dear, most dearly. You will be more than a match for this Theos. It should be quite the spectacle. I'm almost sorry to miss it. Two thousand years. Now I am free. I know not where I will go first. The Valian Republic, perhaps? Or the Plains of Red Ferris? I should like to run, I think. Farewell, Watcher. Okay. Just completed the mark below. Um, one, that's good. Two, I was pretty sure, and in fact bragged about it last week, that she fucking attacks you as soon as the fight's done. Like, the dragon goes, thanks lol, and then tries to eat your face. No, I guess I was wrong. Good job, everybody. Very good indeed. You're gonna cast nature's bomb every turn, here he is, because we need healing. Oh, good job, chat. Hey. I think you got one up on me. Ring finger added. Excellent. Go away. Nidhan was a Glenfather murderer who was notorious for both his brutality and his ability to avoid capture by the tribe's best hunters. When he was finally captured and put to death, his body was buried in a secret place near Cleavon Rilla. Now, Rao had given the unusual recommendation in the hopes that the Inquisitor Ruin would capture the killer's soul and prevent it from returning to the wheel. During a recent cleansing celebration, an all-in child stumbled across Nidhan's grave. Not realizing what she had found, she called her parents, who guessed it what it was, and in turn told the other members of the tribe. Within a day, Nidhan's burial site had been plundered by a few full-hardy grandfathers the body carried away for ritual purposes. All that remained was the ring finger from his right hand. The Anum Father proposed the use of Nidhan's body for preparing sacred objects and reward anyone who could return it to them. Alright. So the paladins. No, be a paladin. Have fun, Pelagina. 24 hours still south. Curtain wall is restored. Maybe that happens if you somehow offend her but aren't notified about it. Yeah, almost certainly. That, that makes sense. Dragons are easy to offend. Nope. Not yet. Nope. Not doing that. Not yet. Not yet. Maybe. Lovely drop. Not giving that to them. Yeah, go find more palms. We want that. Yeah, okay, so those are under White March 2. I think I'll just do the bad nothing. Pretty easy. It would. Leah Roo. Men, Cleop on Relog, Poplane District, Long Watch. Yeah, we can just leave that. Cool. It's worth doing bounties for just the chunk of experience. We do want to level up. I want to stop pressing buttons that slow down the game. Estenwood. Oh, good friends with a good dragon. To find good, honestly. <laughs> um, who knows how good the dragon really is. Om nom nom dragon. Mm, vampire, I think up here. Though I'm guessing. Well, these enemies went for a little while ago, so we can assume so. Master Druid spell. Boop. We fully work out the pole, and we may be able to have. Um, I dare use a shield again.
All right, then. Rehead. Hey. Of course. Tax is collected. Again, we're taking too many taxes. Just give it up. Terrible, terrible. Searing Falls is another one, I think. Love it. Cut an L1 bridge if we can get back to Copper Lane. No, this game doesn't have a concept. Good. Um, and certainly on purpose, given previous writing credits from Evolve, Baldur's Gate, and other Bioware RPGs, they didn't want to have the concept of good as easily described. Even then, uh, I figure the best methodology to keep just to see, uh, let me in. Let me in. The best way to keep a concept of what is good is not this thing is morally worth doing and it is a benefit to, to all, but uh, especially in D and D and other Wizards of the Coast settings, is like how heavily this is cleaved to the concept of the planes of heaven. I don't know if we can get in, which means we may not be able to do that bounty. Got on the side of the bridge, see if it's still broken. I think it is. And so we just have to give it up. What a great loss, I'd say. Gotta be weird though, because you can't get it. It's still very broken. Because you can't get to the other side. Like, you can't get to Elmshore to kill one of the bounties to um, go back to Cladnua to get the next round of bounties until Act 3. Maybe I'm missing something. Maybe the game opens up more when you hit the next city. And then it's like, okay, now you can go back to Lane and Copper Lane only. Which, actually, that seems more and more likely. The more I consider it. Alice was successfully able to reach the rabble rousers and warn them in time for their escape. Lord Bernwigar's lands lie abandoned, but no blood has been shed. Well, I mean, I would love to just give it to them. I'm like, well, congrats, you're a pommy now. You own the land. There is no lord. But sometimes... Yeah, games just don't give you that option. It does make me wonder what would happen if you're like, uh, devil, kill this man, and see what happens. Long watch falls. Oops. Not steering falls, long watch falls. Clear button, real arg. Clear, man. Seeing falls as the Leah Ruman is. We'll see. We did want blood to be shed. We wanted that guy's blood. The jerk. We could kill the jerk. Problem solved. Hell yeah. We can all celebrate. But perhaps that is not <laughs> what uh, we have chosen. Leah Ruman. Yeah, cool. We've done this dungeon. This was a weird side dungeon you had to do. Once you chose your particular faction. I bet they're up north, though. Was that around Leah and me and not in? With really big games, and Pillars is one of them, at some point you're like, okay, I've done all the side quests, or I've done a lot of the side quests. I feel like I've seen so much of the game. I feel like I've done so much of the game that it's offering me. I'm done. Right? And I don't think that's a sign that Honestly, you can find this in reviews where people say, ah, the game was a bit long. I felt like I've come to the point where I wanted to be done with it, and that means I'm declaring the game is too long for me. 
I'm not sure I agree with that entirely. Because I get that feeling no matter how long the game is anyway. I got that feeling on some, uh, like, at the end of... Elysium. Which is, yes, a nice magic RPG, but not nearly as crazy long as, say, Kingmaker or Wrath of the Righteous. Kingmaker is even longer. And I... Oh, Swamp Spores, Corrupted Druid, I think we found him, my friends. Ah, Glassadel. Alright, found you. No, don't, just ignore Pagani. She's a little distracted, she'll be okay. I don't see that as a straight up with game oh, too long. Yeah. Honestly, I feel that's how I feel whenever a game, when I'm getting close to the end of a game. It doesn't actually matter if I've been playing it for 30 hours, 40 hours, 12. I just get to the point where I'm like, okay, I feel like I am done with this. Or I'm embracing the end. This is the, as close as I'll get. Nearby target. That didn't work. Hey. You can get multiple people in there. It, oh, damn, miss. This mind control is very dangerous. Look how badly it's fucked up here it is. Stop using your hatchet, use your bow. Here it is, it's unconscious now. Watcher. Keeps having the sense of you entered the gnome the stage is near the good and the bad. Well, yeah, you know, and like, oh, it's, un it's uncontrollable at times. If, if I'm of the opinion that I feel like I'm, this oh, game is going to end, I'm gonna have that sort of reflection -y, I've come across so much, this is what it feels like, uh, to come to the end of an adventure. Whether it's like, been 10 hours oh, or 40. And I think the weirdest part is I hey. feel this way now about Pillars tonight. If I was simply only entering Act 3, now we haven't started the plot of Act 3. We wholeheartedly ignored it. We ran off to the White March. Had a good time there. But we're doing the cleanup stage, right? Look at the second round of bounties. I'm clicking on the sections of the map that's just like, okay, go here, then here, then here, then here. Really thinking about what's happening. And plus, finishing the master below. That feels huge, doesn't it? At least it should. No one's going to step to us. We've got our sweet, sweet castle, and it's all ours. The Act 3 vibes is exactly right. And you got a good point there, Luxie, too, to say if the if it's totally absent, it feels like something is missing. We should rest. Just ignore those, they're fine. Um, it could feel abrupt if it's not there. <laughs> If we didn't, if the game didn't take a minute to be like, actually, you're coming to the end now, you should be aware of that. It could feel abrupt, or like the end is not being considered. That would be fun. Get him! Jeez. As long as they're still alive, they're just knocked down. Okay. It's a bit silly. That didn't 
work. Need to try something else. I hey. very often want to 100% or mostly 100% of a game. If there's a thing that adds plot, I'm going to do it. If it's just a collection, I, I'm less likely to go for it. Um, uh, okay, so what, what's the line there? Um, in Assassin's Creed 2, there is collect 50 bird feathers. <laughs> Actually, I think it's 150. Yeah, collect 150 bird feathers. Um, I did everything else. I fully upgraded many sections i could not be bothered collecting 150 bird feathers right long what for where's long what again not fearing for the wood and vlog in field 100 bird feathers you gotta see when your mother breaks out of her catatonic state. Oh man! Kinda sad I missed that. Yeah. Ooh, give you 100% of the lore, give you 100% of the story. That's that's how I feel that I, I'm just gonna quickly Google on what falls, like, I can't not. See, it, yeah, give me 100% of the story is exactly true. Very often there's like, oh, because it's in the White March. That's why I can't see it here. Long what falls is there. We'll do that soon. Back to the Deerwood, back to Cadnua, back to handing in some bounties, and then let's go back to the White March, because, like, literally, that's on our list. <sighs> yeah. Unless, if it's like, collect all of the cards. You could fit a whole village in here. Look at all the cars for your garage. Literally nothing else will happen. Don't care. Who the fuck cares? Collect all the weapons is a similar thing as well. Like, yeah, no. But if it's... This side quest is, like, go to this location and collect all of the shiny... Um, in Dragon's Inquisition, there's collect all of these tablets to unlock a particular dungeon where there's elemental damage and elemental resistance for picking up all the random icons. Uh, oops. Hello. I just kind of hey. skip through all that dialogue. Here I am saying I love I love it all and I'm just ignoring it. <clears throat> Let's read them properly. Like I liked picking up all the random stone tablets and then going to the place to lock them in in place and then get a very little bit of backstory about what that ruin was and why. Great. That's that's writing, that's lore, that's universe, that's um, some highly, hopefully highly paid writer being given money to write this little story for me. Yes, please. But if you slotted them in and literally nothing happened, I'd, I'd feel disappointed. Anyway, I brought the head of Glass Deal. One nasty troll's head for a nasty little alchemist. Well, let him know that the job's done. In the meantime, he's a bounty. I've got Thorfinn's head. Seems like crossing the knights tends to lead to a bad end. They pay well enough anyway. Here you are. I'm here for the bounty on Rothka. You may have averted another war with the Black Trees, eh? Here's a coin they're offering. Thanks. Ringfinger. The hunt for Nidhen's remains proved difficult, as the Glenfathans lied incessantly to cover for those who were responsible. When Orlin Brishelgwyn helped Palatina sort the truth out, eventually recovering every part of the dead murderer's body. Though the Glenfathans were more than willing to lie about what they'd done, none of them returned violent when Palatina and the Brishelgwyn confronted them, and Adam Path ordered the Brishelgwyn to bury the body in a new location that was less well traveled than the path of Cleopan Relark. Upon returning to Cadnua, Palagina realized that the other Adam Farth had never asked for Nidhen's ring finger to be returned. I have a spellbind and some mind plants and blood three pond. Not bad on a ring. You ain't done, here's your buddy. Yeah, well, we've had a good finger, I guess. Wealthy noble defending his castle from other lords. I don't care. Give all of your money to your peasants. Become an adventurer or become a carpenter and build something useful. Uh, historian. 
Story Leather worker? Place. Librarian. You're a lord and you do nothing for your people? You're a bad person. I'm not saying become a chanter. Yeah, that'd work too. I'm not saying you strictly need to do something productive to improve the world around you, but there is a point where you may want to consider being helpful to other people in, in the world. Go, Gorgrax. This is a bug too. Do you remember when there were people yelling at us? Can you hear them? They're still here. Oh well. Pedrock. Ah, oh, it's good you're here. I simply must speak with you, my lord. Very well, let's hear it. Call for your ally and stride towards your throne. The ghosties? No, I mean when in the White March expansion when they added uh, your dude is inciting your peasants to have a rebellion against you and a crowd meets you outside um, and they complain for a bit. That's where that sound comes from. And the game doesn't seem to remove that flag to say play this angry crowd sound outside the head keep. I am literally sitting on the lap of my throne mom. The steward of the castle, absolutely. She likes it too. She Like if she could, she'd pat her lap and say, oh, hop on up. And then stroke Slam Shadow's hair and says, you're a good boy, Slam Shadows. You do everything you need to. As I'm sure you're well aware, wealth is a way of birthing enemies. My fortress is beset by thieves. I'm sure one of the lesser nobles is after my treasury. This is a stink of jealousy upon it. It will be weeks before I can secure my holdings, and by then it will be too late. I haven't the connection to hire mercenaries on short notice. That's so I turn to you, my lord. Is there anything you can do? I'd like to a moment to discuss this with my people. Certainly. <clears throat> with a respectful bow, Spidrock steps back out of earshot. How thermal positive. The time had not met. Well, yeah, because they're all dead. <laughs> Here's that hurts, devil. Get him feeling safe and clear out that vault. Or motion for your guest to return. Why are we robbing this man? Literally no reason. He came to us for assistance saying, hey, I think other lesser nobles are stealing my shit. And the game's giving us an opportunity to say, yes, uh, devil, go steal his shit. He will blame other people. We can get away with it scot-free. <laughs> we could do it. I think it'd be pretty funny. But we're going to gain like money and literally nothing else. We don't have an option to say, uh, I'll help you protect your shit as long as you give a third of it out to the, the least well-off people in your area. I'm getting the cravings. I'm getting the cravings to run a game like Kingmaker, but in a tabletop where I can say to my GM, every time this sort of thing comes up, I'm going to say something like, give money to the underprivileged. <laughs> like every time. How good would that be? Anyway, I don't think let's do it. Let's do go number three. We've got no formal votes, but no one's yelling, two, two, steal this shit. Except, of course, Golem's proxy. Let's see what these jealous rivals are dealt with, I guess. Okay, um, marvelous. May I inquire as to your intentions? I'll have missive sent to every noble in my lands. Letters, my lord? Do you think that's sufficient? We can't afford to be at each other's throats. I'm sure these nobles will see reason. Of course. Forgive me for ever doubting you. We are blessed to have someone sensible ruling in Cadnua. Sorry, just had to cough. That's all. All right, let's get out of here. Those that didn't strictly want to send Aloth out because they're going to replace your with the Aloth again. Just a minute. I love my boss, our mage. He's one of my favorites. You'll notice Grieving Mother essentially never leaves that character in line up either. She's great. This place. Even if we've done her quest almost entirely. Okay, to level 14. Hells yeah. That's why you do the bounties. So, like, a little bit of work, you get nearly 6,000. Nearly 4,000. Like, 
<laughs> Easy. May well watch your step. Okay, here it is. Uh, we could go to Hatsong and start Twin Elms, but we're not gonna. We're gonna go back to the White March. Hello, Stalwart. Your party is considered high level for the content in the White March. Standard. Here we are again. It is a binary choice that is confusing. I think that trend may continue. I know, I don't think it's happened to me, but I can stop and look it up. I have, actually, and there are a lot of people, a lot of other people confused, but the, the general consideration is by cho choosing standard, things are not made more difficult, and that's what I choose frequently. While we wait, the enemy grows stronger. You. you send more of us to die. Well, I'm not going to stand around. Are you? You've done plenty, Darian. Because this game is poorly documented. I don't know. I think that's just weird writing. Um, and we did re we did reload to check as well, yes. And like, believe me, it, it could be worse. <laughs> you approach the source of the commotion to see a throng of villagers. You, they're arguing amongst themselves and hurling questions and demands at a lone figure perch above them. The young man stands on the spur of rock, his fish, fist clenched, clenched his clenched fist held a lot. Steam rises from his wild hair and fluffed face as he shuts the gathering. Been a week since our people left these gates. A week since the Iron Flail took him. You see if he's got ignored in the crowd. He paces the outcropping, his eyes burning. Yet we wait here behind our sturdy new walls, hiding in our rebuilt homes. We've done nothing. He's just fist into his palm with a shot with a sharp snap. Fist, not fish. The crowd erupts, bristling with pointed fingers and pointed words. One woman steps forward, her eyes lock on the young man. Who are you to tell us how to defend our own? You ain't been here two months! Several of the others grunt and hoot. You feel a shift in the crowd like a changing tide. Hey, an angry mob. See? We're not so far from home. Hey, dear. And since I got here, I've been working alongside the rest of you. Don't start with that again. A handful of others nod along with him, but they cringe and flinch as another villager joins the fray, shaking his finger at the young orator. Well, it was your idea to send our people to that damned fort in the first place. If it weren't for you and the other leeches that come up with you, we wouldn't be in this mess. The new accuser raises a chorus of furious cries. Darren raises his hands for calm, but the crowd's wrath is snowballing. Continue listening. Enough. Enough. Darren waves for calm, but the crowd has worked itself into a frenzy. He scans the assembly, beads of sweat rolling from his temple. His eyes fall up on you, and he points. You want to boot all the outlanders from your town? Tell that to the hero of the White Forge. Oh, we're a pawn. Hey, <laughs> it wasn't just me. This watcher deserves at least a little credit. <laughs> no one seems to notice it, dear. A dozen head turn in your direction. The villagers recognize you. And their eyes widen with hope and, rev and reverence. Relax, I'm here to help. Then you know about the Iron Flail. You'll stop them? The other villagers whisper and clock, their hope still, more still diluted by fear. Showed up a few weeks after you opened the battery. Demanded we give him the White Forge. He avoids your gates, scraping his boot against the rock. They're led by a Daric Sendomir. Comes from an old Rayad Saren family. The rumor has it the man's half mad with visions. Claims one drove him here to take the White Forge. Oh, really? They're not the only blood suckers around here. Vampires? Uh, the villager glares up at Darren, but most of his fellows are ignoring him by now. Darren raises his voice above the ruffles. Our crew at the battery locked their doors and told the Iron Flail to go back to Raid Saris. Instead, they built a fort in the middle of the wood. Wow. So we sent a committee to reason with them. But that was a week ago. We haven't seen our people since. Low rumble ripples through the crowd. Baron hesitates. I can only mean one thing. He grimaces as a frightened, arguing crowd drowns him out once more. All right. Hey, chat. One, two, three, or four. One, he's right. You've got to defend what's yours. And two, Dwight Forge isn't worth your lives. Give it up. 
And three, can't you share the White Forge with the Red Baron? And four, shrug. Means your people are defected. Yeah, they'd rather be from the Iron File. They got someone that doesn't smell like fish, and they are just living it up. <laughs> I think it's pretty funny. You turn back up, and you're like, um... Please help. What do you think Darren is trying to do to, like, get a crowd of people to go march on the Iron Flail? Are the Iron Flail massive jerks? I think they probably are. Except for missing people. We're getting no votes? Guys. To Red Theron again? Red Theron, uh, Red Theris is a, like another nation state. Um, they're the ones that were helmed up by Aethys. Uh, Red Theris was a vassal state and or a colony, uh, essentially to grow purple crops. And then they were, they had a revolution and became a theocracy when, you know, their god was sitting sitting at the forefront of their politics. But then their god Aethys kind of rose up an army and then marched across the Deerwood and killed a lot of people. <laughs> they all suck them, yes. It's right it's right after the whole nation. I mean they lost. Their god was blown up. <laughs> it's a different kind of theocracy but it's just not explicitly for power. Uh, because the divinity is, in fact, physically there. That is, of course, if you believe Aethys really did control Widewind, or possess Widewind, in that way. Ooh. <laughs> oh, Mako, it's terrible. <laughs> I don't hold it against you. Easy way to test. Stabbings. Well, I actually think he, he was stabbed, um, and he lived. That was part of the problem, so they had to blow him the fuck up with, essentially, a magical nick. Well, I'll make a choice. In fact, no, let's not make a choice. Nobody voted, so I'm going to choose four. Frog. <laughs> Too late, Luxie. The villagers shout and squawk louder than ever. Maybe we could nudge them into torching their own village. Devil. Please, everyone. In the fragile silence that follows, the others turn and look at Darren. Whatever our difference is, we've got to deal with the army at our gates. He looks back to you. You've done a lot for Stalwart already. Many of us wouldn't even be here if it wasn't for you. He breaks off, looking as if he'd like to stuff his words back into his mouth. After an uneasy pause, he swallows and continues. What I mean is, if anyone could deal with an army, it's you. I love that you are not given an option to not help. Look at that, one, two, or three. Very well, I'll help you, or I've got my own business with this army, or just let me where the fort is. I'm like, very well, I'll the help you. The Iron Flail cleared a patch of forest north of Durgan's battery. Built their fort there. It'll be well guarded, so if you can get in without raising an alarm, you may have an easier time of it. The important thing is to deal with the commander. If you can get rid of him, the rest of the soldiers will scatter. I think I've dreamed about this army. What exactly did you see? He watches you with wide, wandering eyes. A murmur ripples through the crowd. Now this is more interesting. One, two, three, or four. One, Talbot was destroyed, which is true. Two, lie. You came together and defended yourselves. And three, the dream was unclear. And four, uh, forget it, I, I need to get going. What do you think? While you discuss what you'd like, I will go on and respond to chat. And talk about Ray and Ceres while you choose the option. There was definitely enough time, Loxy, is what I'm saying. Mecca's like, yeah, uh, they'll die against actual armed forces. That's a good point. And if you make content, you don't make it not to be played. Yeah, I agree. Um, I love that. I love it when games have many options, some of which I would never choose because they'd make me very sad. I still love them being there. And I don't think choosing those options makes you a horrible person, which comes up a lot in online communities. Yeah, not terrible. Um, <clears throat> I... It's also, like, refusing the call is kind of pointless. And some video games allow, like, the first village for you to fuck about in when 
like the stakes are low. I'm thinking of JRPG specifically, maybe like the first first table, you know, Doom Village for a while. And you can mess about there for a while. Um, I like having reducible options there, and then something happens to the point where you can't say no. And the most negative you can get is like, I'm going to do the heroic thing and start the plot as a game, but I'm not going to be happy about it. Like, that's legit. That's a good option. That's, that's what it should be like a lot of the time, because if you just say no to everything, you're not playing the game. And rolling it back to TRPGs, that first quest hook, the first quest hook, not every quest hook, but the first quest hook, you're like, hey, adventurers, you want to investigate this thing. You should expect none of your players to be like, no, we're not doing it. Because if <laughs> if everyone says, no, we're not doing it, then, oh, you sit around in the tavern and then you don't do anything, right? Why did you get together and make characters? Anyway. Anyway, everyone said free. Of course. We're just thankful this dream led you back. No worries, buddy. Anyway, we've got our work cut out for us here. He gives the crowd a purposeful look. Grumbling, they start to disperse. While you're out, stop by the battery. Wangra and her team are still repairing the heavy cannons. They've made a lot of progress elsewhere. Heavy cannons! Thought you might like to see how far it's come. He shrugs. Wanted to ask you about something. I haven't been here long, but uh, I'll tell you what I can. Brought you to start with? Work. I was a cobbler in New Yarma, but the city got more crowded every year. Rural types fleeing the legacy. A couple months ago, I heard Stalwart was offering land and opportunity to new settlers, so I figured I'd give it a go out here. Mm. For a while, folks seemed glad to have some new blood. But that changed as more and more of us came. So, tell me about the Iron Flail. They heard about the White Forge and came running. Just like a lot of us did. Only difference is, they brought siege weapons. As best anyone can tell, they're from the border region near Little Bend. One of the poorest parts of the country. For Raid Saris, well, that's saying something. There seems to be a lot of tension about town. <laughs> Before you open Durgan's battery, people tell me Stalwart barely had enough warm bodies to keep the town running. A bunch of us came when we heard about the White Forge. But now, uh, I think the old timers would just as soon send us back. He begins picking items off in his fingers. We take the best jobs, we don't pay our respects to Andra, we're overcrowding the town. He shakes his head. I get it. Stalwart's changing. Same thing happened in New Yarma when folk moved in from the countryside. But they can't keep blaming us for everything that goes wrong out here. His eyes and a steaming cloud escape his lips. I'm just hoping they'll calm down once the Iron Flail is gone. Me too, Darren. Leave. Let's go. Rest updated. Investigate the fort. Alright, we will. Don't worry. New quest. Reach the raid there in fort. Okay. I heard there's been a murder in the mines. New quest, ready the cannon! Neat. I'm here for the bounty on the old Dunrid hunting lodge. Thank Galloway. And you, of course, I'll be honest, I worry those fools are going to end up here and burn down the rest of the village. It gives you the purse, it's almost full to the point of bursting. Sweet! Love it! Taxes. God, we have too many taxes. The celebrant's dirge. Since the end of the Saints' War, dear woodens have gathered at the Evendure Bridge to commemorate the sacrifice of the dozen who gave their lives to defeat Saint Whitewin. It has become customary for priests of Magrin leading a professional to sing a dirge to end the ceremony. This year, when a priest attempted to sing a dirge, his tongue swelled in his throat and he died painfully before the assembled crowd. When another priest attempted to sing the dirge a month later, he suffered the same fate. Some believe the gods are to blame the priest for the priest's death. Others suspect vengeful raid Zeric. Whatever is to blame, the priesthood of Macron and the soldiers of God have considered all what they've brought to justice. Have fun, Durant. That's right, you gotta go talk to your The guild never said negotiating trade agreements was part of the job. Run for mayor, they said. It's an easy job, they said. I should have stayed in the mines. He notices your approach and his eyes widen. Slam Shadow, what brings you back to Starwood? You're always welcome here, he beams at you. What was that about a negotiation? There's a group of merchants from Defiance Bay interested in a trade agreement with Starwood. Their representative, Nesta, and staying at Grubstrath. 
been avoiding her because I have zero experience with treaties and contracts and all that. I was a minor, not a diplomat. You can go talk to her on my behalf. Looks at you, hopefully. As mayor, I give you full authority to negotiate on Starwood's behalf. What makes you think I'd do any better than you in a, in a negotiation? You're the hero Stalwart and the man who reclaimed White Forge. Of course, you do better than me. I'm going to go talk to Nesta then. Thank you. As I said earlier, you can find her in Greg's Rest. I'm pretty busy, so unless there's something else. How's Stalwart doing these days? We've rebuilt. Western Palisade is fixed. Some fancy merchant set up shop at Katie's house used to be. We've also got a proper temper to Abaddon again. Never understood why the old right stuck with that and a Stalwart in the first place. Cool. Probably why we failed the quest to finish off the Andra people, because like we left, and then they left. No, I have it in fear, no one else. Whoops. I can't do everything perfectly. Well, on that note, I forgot to mention that. Hey, um, in nine minutes we're gonna have our break. Oh come on, stupid sword! Okay. Now you're just pissing me off. She slams her forge hammer down on the unfinished blade with a loud clank. Straighten out, damn you! I will not. Temper, Mazka. The older priest glares at Mazka reproachfully. That's what we're doing, Ingram. Sorry, Master. It just slipped out. She takes a deep breath and releases it slowly. What's wrong with the sword? Where to begin? She gestures a rapidly cooling lump of iron on her, on her anvil. For one, I can't manage to shape the metal no matter how hard I try. Master Ingram says, envision the sword. So I'm envisioning really, really hard. I think I'm ending up with a club. Maybe a mace if I'm lucky, but no sword. My work doesn't improve soon. They'll kick me out of the temple. Can't be a priest if not a proper smith. Unless you help me. Mazka glances around. Go on. I took a peek at Master Engram's law books and came across a ritual that can enchant a forge hammer to boost, boost smithing skill. Uh, that's exactly the kind of aids I need. I've already completed the first part of the ritual, crafting the hammer. Unfortunately, the next two parts require me to travel to Deerwood, and there's no way Master Engram will let me leave any time soon. I'll complete the forge hammer ritual for you. That's great! She hands you a forge hammer. That hammer actually turned out alright. The first place you need to go to is the Shrine of Aberdeen and Crucible Keep. As in first fires district in Science Bay. I've never been there myself, just place the hammer at the shrine and should get blessed. Or something. After that, you'll need to find the Shrine of Magrin in Magrin's Forge. If Magrin's Fork. It's not that far from Defiance Bay, uh, to the north of the city, I think. Do the same thing with the hammer at that shrine, then head back here. I better get back to it before Master Ingram gets annoyed with me. Isn't crafting using a magical forge hammer unethical? I'm not trying to show anyone up, I just want to appear competent. You know, find myself time until I'm actually competent. Why did you decide to become an acolyte of Abaddon? It's family tradition, when I barely managed to keep going. She glares at the unfinished sword on her anvil. Barely. Is mixing up the lines of where the dialogue is and then fixing it in your head to make it make more sense, but not exactly as written, uh, an issue? Because it's something I do all the fucking time, you must have noticed. The actual line is, it's a family tradition, might have managed to keep going. She looks at the unfinished sword on her anvil. Barely. Maybe the text is too small for me, which means I'm getting old. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Hey, Ingram. Ingram nods at you and smiles in recognition. Ah, oh, the Kindler of the White Forge. We owe you a great debt for the industry and faith you've restored here. Welcome to the Temple of Abaddon. What do you do here? I lead this temple and guide the acolytes in ma matters both spiritual and mundane. He indicates the forge and anvils. Worshippers and other gods pray or meditate. We Abaddonians venerate our god through the act of smithing. Our doors always open, our forge always alight. How may I help? It seems to be a temple to Ondra. Tilts his head to one side, back when this was the dying forgotten place. But the cleric's attendant left as his customary their goddess. The throngs have since come to sell what sort of more practical deity. Farewell. Sorry, Master, just flipped out, and other entirely inappropriate in your windows. First of all, hot. <laughs> Power plays sexy. When done consensually, it's pretty fucking cool. This is going to be fantastic. Just wait till they hear about this back home. Theoretically, I meant to have bifocals for years and years with Luxie. Yeah, but I don't. I had an eye exam a little while ago. Because I thought, you know, I would have I-I-H, but I don't, and that's pretty interesting. Probably don't. 
almost certainly don't. Um, and they're like, yeah, eyes are fine. Your left eye is slightly worse, but your other way is great. Don't worry about it. So I continue being the only one in my family with decent vision. Can I interest vision. you in a new blade? Not just decent, um, not just my family, but my extended family as well. Fuckers. <laughs> but I'm making that mistake of fucking things up the line, uh, fucking up the lines of what I'm reading more and more. Interesting. You can see your own reflection in, in these shields. This looks like stalwart from the road to Deerwood. Cheap perfumes line the bottom shelf. These identical evident figurines are all of equally poor quality. The shopkeeper's clothes seem a little nicer, if not terribly warm, compared to what you've seen around Stalwart. His hair is immaculately coiffed, and his rosy cheeks look like they've barely been touched by the mountain wind. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We've got arms and armor, all top quality. Oh, perhaps you'd like a few potions? Stalwart positive. Always a pleasure to meet respectable company out here, anyway. Show me what you have to say. Spur called Twin Sting. Pretty cool. Not amazing. Alright, none of these are particularly interesting. Oh, cold coat. Exceptional fly. Uh, endurance drop. Mm, it's not that good. Free resolve on that. That's not bad. He carries many scars. Athletics and defense all stunt. Oh, not terrible either. <laughs> nice. Uh, nothing particularly useful, I'd say. And if only because I don't pay a lot of attention to what should be, like, really good. And... Oh, okay. I don't pay a lot of attention to min-maxing everything we have. Oh well. <laughs> appear to be free of grey hairs. I have silver in my mustache. It's hard to see at this distance and at this size. But it's there. It's with, like one patch. It's very weird. Um, Some though. No, we're going to grass. Grass dress first. Just up, no. Parents have equally shitty eyes. Both mine too. Because if I stream with a zoomed in only picture of Mustard, she'll notice that the center part is not deliberate, it just doesn't grow there properly. Which is something I discovered when I was like 20. And now I just like it. <laughs> what? You're barely injured. Esther! Huh? Ugh, I thought I ordered ale. You might, she might have brought me this dishwater by accident. She sighs. Maybe on purpose, you can never tell. Brings you to Stalwit. A representative group of investors from Defiance Bay are attempting to establish a trade agreement with Stalwit. But before they're willing to commit it to any agreement, they want to have the town assessed to make sure it's as prosperous as people are claiming. That's where I come in. She takes a long sip from her mug. What's your assessment of the town? There's certainly a lot of coin changing hands, but whether this is simply a short lived boom or something that will persist long term remains to be seen. Tough has sent me. I'm here to negotiate the trade treaty on Stalwit's behalf. Finally, I was beginning to wonder if Talfus had forgotten about me entirely. First up, Stalwart's fish, Fishery. My clients are concerned with the liability of Stalwart's prosperity. I'll meet you outside the front door. Jeez, that's what we're doing? We're doing a whole thing? We're doing a whole thing. Alright. Well, Slime Shadows can level up. Raise that lore to level 15. Just love to set the scroll. Amazing. Save the rest. I'm so slink by biting winds at El Neri. That's pretty good. An invocation to just champion brave the horde alone. The champion feels himself a health with frantic energy and significantly increasing attack speed. That's true. What Raunaka found down the deep. Summon us once more. We do like summoning, but let's actually go straight up freeze damage. Uh, don't need the dual class. Don't need any of these, to be honest. Five deflection. That'll do. Their champion braved the horny alone. You don't need to be our grieving mother. Uh, a grieving mother doesn't need to be your devil. I 
thought you agreed with your mother at first. You do need to be a mechanics expert. Sorry, love. Dagger, there you go. You get to increase your skill with the dagger. Please, someone has to do something. Piss right. off, Kern. I got enough problems. All right, we will talk to you in a second, Kern. We're going to have a break. I'm actually going to call it a 10 minute break today. I was reading some threads on Twitter that were like, hey, Twitch streamers, uh, you take shorter breaks, um, you, your stream is worth later on. I'm okay, right, that makes sense. So 10 minutes, I'll be back at 8.40, okay? Back soon. Remember to go stretch, have a breather, that sort of thing. Very important. <laughs>
Okay, so we're back in chatting because you need to find the larger view for this. But first off, look at this cool fat. Look how cool this shirt is. Pay no attention to the tip. So, what drink am I coming back with tonight? I'm going to call it a bad decision. This is some Mountain Dew Soda Stream. And this is the Eggermeister. Because I don't have any energy drinks. My energy drinks are not super great. <laughs> ah, chat, you seem to have gathered exactly what we're about to do here, haven't we? Might as well be a good looking disaster while we get at it, right? So, a Jaeger bomb with a shot of Jaeger dropped into an energy drink. What I might as well call a bad decision is going to be a shot of Jaeger dropped into Mountain Dew and not drunk as quickly as a regular Jaeger bomb because I think that's a waste. First, we'll take a sip. Mm, aniseed. Jaeger is a lovely drink if you like aniseed. And if you do like aniseed, it's really good. If you don't, it tastes like shit, right? Because it's the strongest sort of aniseed flavor you can get. My pocket just buzzed, and there's probably someone who's watching the stream but not in chat saying, uh, don't do this, what the fuck is wrong with you? So I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> All right. Ready? Nearly, and it's in. Lovely. Lovely, lovely. <laughs> now we're just going to let it sit there, honestly. You actually drop a shot glass in, yeah. You're supposed to like drop it with slightly more force too. Uh, if your pint glass is more thick and solid than this, but I really love this glass, and not just because it says gamer on it, which <laughs> right? That mixes well. That mixes too well. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna do that again. That's really fucking good, actually. I quite like this a lot. <sighs> oh wait, there was a dude in there. We were gonna help. <laughs> I mean, look, it's aniseed. Aniseed is sweet and licorice and pretty tasty. Decades I've lived here, we're working drunk here. Not a one of them will lift a finger. The dwarf's face is damp and blotchy. His outburst seems to be taking something out of him. He sags, his lined features showing his exhaustion. I'm sorry, I have no heart for conversation. It's not someone who you would drink to your health. Nobody buying you a drink? If only that was it. Kern rubs his face. If I hadn't come in that night, I'd gone home instead. I've done something terrible. I'm not sure I can fix things. This neighbour of mine, Addy, we've never gotten on at the best of times. A land dispute, using half my property. Things have gotten out of hand. Go on. Stranding with sorrows, in the inn, there's a stranger. Tiff have been. Obviously from out of town. We got to talking. He's all smiles, so he's a paladin. He'll sort Hattie out for me, get my land back, if I give him the week's wages. I didn't know he was a black walker. Uh, <clears throat> I didn't know he was a bleak walker. Madman. I was half drunk. Thought Kestevin thought he could speak on my behalf. Put a scare into Hattie, not kill him. So you got lucky. Tried to call him off once I realised. He laughed and said that doesn't happen. Please, you're going to help me. Nobody else here is willing to take him on, even for the coin I'm offering. Bleak walkers, a sex of paladins. Not sorry, dude. Oh, gold pack knights, very similar. <sighs> I 
compared to. <laughs> it's real good. I'm going to make that again. In fact, it's going on my recommendation list for anyone who actually likes Anaseed. Put Mountain Dew with Anaseed. It's good. I would add... I'd certainly um, mix up the ratio as a bunch, but taste-wise, that's really good. Anyway. <laughs> Poisoned. You lot. <laughs> You're hilarious. And... Okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to ask what, what do you want me to do, just so we get that out of the way. Stop that maniac. And Hattie, make sure he's safe. His family, too. Um, let's ask some questions. You might as well, right? Oh. I'll tell you anything if it'll help. What do you know? What's a bleak walker? I, I don't look around. As far as I understand, the order thinks brutality is the best way to ensure peace. They don't negotiate and they don't give quarter. Once they've been ordered to clear some place out, they don't stop until they're done. They don't change the bones. They just have to turn up half the time. They get paid to stand there and be a threat. Like, I don't understand why Kestavin is doing this. Sounds like a petty contract for a paladin. Maybe they even knew there was a contract. How can that be right? Did Kestavin not tell you he was a bleak walker? Not at first. Not until it's too late again. I'd had a few drinks, but I think I'd remember if you'd announced it. Where's Kestavin now? Must have headed out to Hattie's by now. Stuck around here for a few days after we talked. To bloat, I think. I was waiting for someone. And he's left. Alright. Okay. Chat. What do you think? I'll make sure Hattie's and his family are safe. The two. For five. I'll see what I can do. Five. Uh, sorry, seven. Wait, you hired a man to kill Hattie? And eight. It sounds like he's solving your problem. Or nine. Good luck with that. We've got one vote for two, and I think that'll pretty much cover it, to be honest. Makes the most sense. Yeah. That's good. Uh, Hendo, Luxie, let's choose number two. I'll make sure Hattie and the family is safe. Thank you. You're a good man, Slab Shadows. Hattie lives out east in Whitestone Hollow. Please, hurry. Hell yeah! We'll help, just not right away, that's for sure. Instead, we're going to lead a merchant assessor around town. The game will wait for us. It's going to be okay. Which is a point of unrealism, but I like it, especially compared to the alternative, right? I'd like a game to heavily sign followers when it needs you to do something immediately. Otherwise, there'll be consequences. I'd like a role-playing game to do the same as well. We're gonna fuck about, and you need to tell me if it's super urgent. Otherwise, we'll feel bad in a minute. In a minute, we get. <laughs> yeah. I'll just freezing him. Let's get this over with quickly. I'll go inside the fishery, but that smell of I'm also regretting having the fish to do at the inn. One of the fishermen said they found a body in one of the barrels once. I really wish we had Zawa with us at that point. According to the town's records, the fishery doesn't export much these days. Why do they keep it open? It's an unnecessary drain of resources. Better spent on the white forge and mines. Living down the fishery would help convince the investors at Starwood. Is serious about maintaining its prosperity. I think number one, I'm like, the fishery keeps Starwood self reliant, less expense, and keep inquiring outside food. I'm not going to help a community become less self reliant. Hmm. Pragmatic answer. I think the fishery remains open should any objections against it be raised. So briefly, we're green, the head fisherman, rather shady fellow, would you say? See the time that should be in charge? Let's just go. I'll be heading over to Starwood Mines next. My clients are concerned about the security and safety of the mines. Maybe they're when you're ready. Enough experience, they'll level up. Great screeching, mother. Problem is, we haven't been in the mines. And we can. So I'm actually going to make an executive decision and go in and investigate there. And talk to some people. Just in case it matters. I'm talking to a... I swear there's something strange going on in the mines. Pump the vine or fill the cart. We could talk to Nesta, I think she's about there. Let's not and go in and solve a problem before we do. This seems bad. Take the only level four five power you can. Thank you. 
You've already got that one, don't you? Two-handed style. 15 fit damage. Which is wielding a sweet sword. <laughs> well, something what, something good. Um, <clears throat> there may be a problem inside the mine. I'm not sure. We'll solve it first. Well, that doesn't look good. No, please! You've got the wrong man! I don't remember any of this! Quiet! We'll get the truth out of you soon enough. Take him away! That one was much louder. That's interesting. Four minutes to be. Certain faced woman approaches you. Her already impressive frown is overly emphasized by a slight underbite. She felt their arms. Nesta mentioned someone would be coming along. Be careful where you wander. These mines are still crawling with all sorts of pests. I haven't been able to clear them out yet. Of course, you have experience with that sort of thing, I hear. Guess I have to thank you for opening the battery. I miss me, the foreman. I've been busy keeping busy down here since the battery's fires were lit. I'm busy than I'd like sometimes. What's going on here? Things are hard enough around here with the local wildlife. Last thing you need to deal with deal with was a murder of all things. Tell me about this murder. You probably saw Gamble getting carted off. Found him by the body of another miner, Samoth. Lost quite a few miners recently. Most just vanished. Samoth's the first corpse to stick around. We have caught Gamble, but we haven't been able to find the bodies. You know, if anyone can help us put all this to rest, it's you. I'd like to be able to give these miners families some answers, even if it's bad news. I'll look into it. I appreciate the help. We certainly need it. I have a few questions for you. Real thing. What do you want to know? About those missing miners. Did you find out anything? Tell me about Gamble. Don't know him so well. Certainly never pegged him for a killer. I'd say better off questioning him myself. See if, see if he'll tell you where you stash the corpses. Might as well peg someone. Uh, what do you know about the victim, Sam? Awesome. His body's up to the east. Folks say you've got an act of making sense of corpses. Like the Dunreed Rose thoughts, right? Then we'll ask you something. Sure thing, what do you want to know? Why are these mines so important? The demand for ore's gone up since they opened the battery. Everyone wants their own shiny piece of dirt and steel. The thing is, the battery was hit pretty hard by the tremors. The battery mines collapsed. Were they in the game in town? Oh, the mine's holding up. Tamer did most of the work in whipping this place into shape before I got here, but she's getting on in years. In the end, she felt it was better to hand things off. She still drops by occasionally to make sure the miners, the, the workers are in order. Okay. Well, well, well. Mines are very common in pseudo. How could I miss it? Looks like he went swimming in Samoth's blood. Blazes. Never would have pegged him for a freak. Haven't pegged him yet. Get on with it. Hi, Gamble. It's fairly clear why Gamble is under suspicion. His face is splattered with blood. His hands are bound, but you can see blood and scraps of flesh under his fingernails. Wank. Gamble's posture is hunched, and tears have dug tracks to the layer of gore in his face. You find yourself the target of a pleading expression the moment you're in sight. A few questions for you. Perception 13. Gamble looks up at you wide-eyed. As he opens his mouth to speak, you notice his teeth and lips are also stained with blood. Please, it's like I told them. I don't know what happened. I c can't remember a thing. There's no way I could have done that to Samus. You're covered in blood. How do you explain that? Gamble swallows, ducking his head in full silence. What's the last thing you can remember? Turk shaking me awake. Shaking. Turk shirking. Tur Terek shaking me awake. I was on the floor. Samus was curled up nearby. He was he was dead. His face crumpled. That's all. His hour was just gone out of my head. Who's Terek? He handles construction in the tunnel. It was paving to the north, and he and the others have been walking or clearing it for a while now. Must have been grabbing supplies for the crew when he found me. Where are the other miners? So no, nobody knows when the miners have gone. I, I swear it. I don't have anything to do. <laughs> His voice cracks. Tell me where they are, and I'll ask the foreman to be leading it with you. I'll tell you if I knew, but I don't. I don't have any idea what's going on. Please, I'm telling the truth. What do you do here? Me? I'm just a dragsman. Load the kite. Load the carts. Get the ore from here to there. I do whatever they ask me to, really. I, I haven't lived in the stall at long. I heard they needed more hands to work the mines. Thought I'd make a fresh go of it. Maybe even see the battery. 
Why is that happening? Tries to wipe his nose with the back of a hand, beating Crimson Smears behind. That's all. Great. Scrolls and papers documenting the sale of iron ore and sulfur are crawling onto the shelves. We're not talking to you yet, uh, yet mister. We're solving problems first. We're adventurers. Solving problems is what we do. It's fine. Don't even think about it. Location discovered. Samus body. It's probably that then, isn't it? Azorip! Look out! Azorip! Get him! Here's Alor taking significant damage again because, you know, he's wielding a staff in the leg. Wallop! Oh wait! Lights are on our list, aren't they? Kill five blights. Let's see if we can get Ella to get killing blows. Oh, that was devil. Oh. Very unlikely. Oh, light gone. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I don't think we'll get Ella to get enough killing blows to unlock the next level, but we're gonna try as long as it's not too hard, okay? Level up there. Right there. Nice hat, buddy. I'll take a bonus knockdown. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Corpse. Of course. The other corpse. This is Zora's okay. corpse. The third less dangerous. Disable helmets. I wish I had the option. Helmets are hardly heroic. Some of the bodies laid out clean in. You can see his throat has been torn out and his face has, has, has deep scratches on it. His hands are stained a light yellow. Do you have a body? Just spread thin, too thin through these lines. Oh, nice troll. Hey, buddy. That's amazing. Also, not going to turn out super well. Another fireball, please. Oh. Ah. I shall deal with Or it troll master. Jeez, that one was hard. Oh, the gummies did hit real hard by that. See how he's down? Dragon Age 1 didn't have high helmets, and it was a very not amazing but very clever mod modded into the game okay. to allow it. Leave it to me! It added a step in carrot in combat was as soon as combat started, re-equipped the helmet, and then took off as soon as combat ended. I don't think that's a particularly elegant solution, but it shows how much people want to not have the face of characters hidden by something to not suffer a mechanical negative. I guess we could all just play godlike. Jeez, that was a tough one, wasn't it? Miner's note. A set of fragmented notes is scribbled almost illegibly in the scrap of parchment. Tunnels. Remember lamp. Keep heads on right wall the whole way. Watch your spiders. Not fair. Do watch your spiders. Spiders bad. I mean, it's not their fault. Well, there's a spider. It's not their fault. Spiders are terrifying. They just are. <laughs> Hell 
yeah. Of course. I love the devil cackling. She's amazing. My mind feels sharp as steel. And every time I pick her up when I'm playing through pillars, which has been a while, let's face it, I wonder why I waited so long to get her. Not only is having a rogue highly fun, she's hilarious. Come on, use your AI, yeah. buddy. Just standing back. Got an arrow for this one. The improvements in AI in Pillars 2 is something I'm greatly looking forward to. Oh my god. Did Moon Spider, did you wander somewhere else start another fight entirely? Prepare to fight a dare just holding the line for us. Hey. I'll take a look. Look. I shall be discreet. Yeah, Elof, I know you can be the street, but can you for me? Peek inside these shadow burrows reveal the gleam ring and gleaming stare in many eyes. My mind. <sighs> these miners seem a little loopy to you. Well, never mind all that. Contract of sale. This document details the purchase by someone named Cillian of a handful of constructs for use in the sulfur mine. The sulfur appears to have been sold one Gelvino. Hmm. Oh, but there's a crystal. Where is it? Why did she lock the crystal away? Why punish us like this? Smiley says blankly ahead, eyes wide and unfocused. Well, that's weird. Rotting flesh construct. Cillian! Well, this can only be a good thing. Hey, there. Just hold on a moment. She turns towards the nearby constructs. Stand down. The constructs stop instantly, limbs going limp at their side. There we go. Now, what can I do for you? You control these constructs? Press the wrong button. You control these constructs? That's right. You just a lot of workers seeing as they don't eat, sleep, or go crazy and kill their workmates. She smokes. I was often to use a miner anyway. I'm looking into the disappearance of the miners to Islamy. Can you answer some questions? I suppose so. I'm not sure how much help I'm going to be. Turk. Turk's the one that found Gamal. Do you think Gamal's responsible? She looks sure looks that way. This thing is he's got bits of Samus in his teeth. She grimaces. Have you noticed any strange behavior in the other miners? Mining's rough work at the best of times. That's why I like using the constructs. I think these tunnels just have to get to people over time. Never thought Gamal would snap like that, but sometimes, yeah, folks start acting a little strange, like when, uh, who was it? She frowned. Huh. You know, my memory's been acting up lately. I'm starting to think Turk might be onto something with that gas theory of his. Farewell. Swing on by if you have any more. Cillian's gaze seemed to slide off you. With a sudden convulsive ripple, her posture changes. She hunches forward, her arms dangle loosely at her sides. Brothers. Sisters. Karenath is here. Her head turns towards you, but her gaze is empty. Are you all right? I've been looking for you. We know what you've done. Her legs trudge forward in slow, ponderous steps, as if she might collapse under her own weight at any moment. Did you hear me? Take him away. Lock him up until we get what we want. The constructs behind her turn as one. Their clawed fingers at the ready. Constructs charge at you. Good lord, what is happening in there? Right? Okay, well, that fuck is knocked down. Courtesy of Africa's friend. Ningoth killing blow. Get him, Alf! <laughs> 
Aslan, can we heal our allies, please? That's it. Bonk. Quethe. Seal well, me too. She's just been relatively normal aside from the flesh construct, but now something else happened. Rod, breastplate, the waste of clarity. Air against Redfairy. And it is a charmed. My god, that would be very useful. Slam. No, you're full, mind. Alright, Elf, you take that. All right, then. Yellow paper gusts yeah. occasionally from these vents. They mean acrid odor in the air. This dark bar extends deep into the wall of the mines. Unlike the miners' tunnels, the, wall here have, the walls here have almost a slick texture, interspersed with damp, pressed earth. A few paces past the entrance, the, enter, entrance, the tunnel widens considerably. You find yourself at crossroads, where the tunnel splits off in three directions. Two tunnels lead to the left and right, while a third stretches on ahead of you. You feel a breeze, faint but steady, coming from the tunnel to your right. I'm going to get lost, just warning you. Let's take the path to the right. Walking on, you come to a fork in the road. The tunnel splits here, coming away to the left and right. You feel a breeze, faint but steady, coming from the tunnel to your right. Let's take the right. You plunge forward into the darkness. Reaching out, you can feel the walls continuing to the left or right, but you cannot see what lies just ahead. You hear a faint rustling from just down the tunnel to your right, and a repetitive tap, 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 bristly legs striking the cavern floor. Faint breeze goes across your face, flowing from the tunnel ahead. Let's take a path to the right. Midway down the tunnel, a spider suddenly emerges from the darkness, dagger like mandible sludging down towards you. The long fangs suddenly miss. <clears throat> the long, long fangs narrowly emit, miss. But during the desperate struggle that follows, the spider nearly yanks her arm from its socket. Having failed, it stumbles away down the tunnel after easier prey. After a short distance, you come to a dead end. Turn around. You plunge forward into the darkness. You're reaching out, you can feel the walls continuing to the left or right, but you cannot see what lies just ahead. You feel the breeze, take the steady coming from the tunnel to your right. Take the path to the right! Logging on, you find a f come to a fork in the road. The tunnel splits here, curving away to the left and right. Damp, but not entirely unpleasant breeze flows towards you from the tunnel to your left. Go to the left! You, tr you trudge briskly past a long, empty stretch of tunnel. Logging on, you come to a fork in the road. The tunnel splits here, curving away to the left and right. You feel the breeze, faint but steady, coming from the tunnel to your right. Let's go to the breeze! You see light up ahead as the tunnel comes to an end. Stepping clear of the tunnel, you find yourself in a new cavern system, a thick layer of spiderwebs under your feet. Well, we didn't get that lost, that's a plus. Remember the note that was like, take the way, follow to the right, and look out the spiders? Look at this massive map, it's called Luminous Caves. The dominated miner down here. Step, step, crystal. I know you're hiding the. Give it to me. All right. Well, Wait. we found the problem. There are Vithrax dominating people down here, but not in a fun way. How dare! Of course. Well, that's not fun. Well, time to keep going. Man, man, man. Yeah, we met some friendly Vithrax, but no, these ones are jerks. Ooh, mind grub. Vithrak delicacy. <laughs> cool. Eat it, get four intelligence and perception, and be thickened. That's cool. Love me some fantasy drugs. I think they're fascinating. I think a world building without drugs wait, is wait. missing something important. Me too. Me too. So in the end, you're just gonna be like, well, we have alcohol, so. Oh, this is bad. Run. Not that far. 
We need to fight them on a single front, not 12, otherwise they'll be in a lot of trouble. My mind feels sharp as steel. Okay, let's keep this going. Think about this appropriately. We don't have any heals, which is not how we play right now. Endurance is annoying, so we didn't want to take it. Fuck that guy. Drop some. Got an arrow. Good, good, good. Lava room. Got an arrow for this one. My mind feels sharp as steel. I'm gonna try and get two heals for our good friend. Come on, Shadows. What are you doing? My mind feels sharp as steel. Okay, good thing we are playing on a low difficulty. Hey. Then we can come out of this, okay. There's okay. still an enemy that appears to be in con combat with us. There it is. A spectral grave sword. Ellington time! Yeah, that should do it. Yeah. Come on, Vithrak. You guys are cool. Vithrak's still cool. Spoiling. See you. Falling noise is so amazing. Should we use that right to protect us to protect us against like the mind effect. Death Me too. Anything that drink needed to change was more Jaeger. The light from these mushrooms illuminates the dust, dust in the air, revealing the thick clouds of spores. You feel your nose tense up as you breathe. Okay. Poor Aloth is very injured. You're gonna rest. How may I help? I've got plans for you. We're going to take your right of prayer against treachery because it's too high for you to cast. We're going to put it on Slam Shadows, and Slam is going to cast it so that we don't yeah. have to do. Must be in combat to use that right. A scroll. Okay, yeah. that's probably why. But it lasts 200 yeah. seconds. 28 seconds. Never mind. Actually, Sorry. I thought it was a pre combat buff, which would make it a lot more useful. More Jaeger. The whole bottle. The drink goes in the bin. Luxy. I would have. We'll have none of this Jaeger bashing here. That's just about enough Jaeger yeah. bashing here, lady. Gega is lovely. Aniseed is lovely. There are a lot of doorways here that seem to lead to places I'm ignoring. Barry lies across this doorway, humming with a strange energy. You can see no obvious way past it. 
that if it's there, I can go to let me through. Hey, get back here! People there. Hi. Not even in fun way. Not that somebody uses the joke. Not gonna be the last either. <laughs> They're green because they didn't want it to kill them before this time of the fight. Like the casting delayed by fireball gives you enough time to cast another fireball. My bow's ready. Come on! That's the spirit. Let's get him. The door! Release me! Hmm. What do we feel about yelling, The door! Release me! That's an interesting thing to say out of nowhere. Sweet. My new turn and laugh. Keep the turn, just laugh. Of course. Fair enough. The Vitrax stares at you. Spider like speech is unreadable. This speech that forms within your thoughts is delivered in a low, even timbre. Why did you come here all in spawn to slaughter our people? I don't think you speak Adirian so clearly. He speaks to your mind, Flam. You... <laughs> You've met several Vithrax before. Some of the Stalwart miners are being effect affected by your colony. When Tilda just made the Vithrax appears to be thinking, and you hear a series of low, hollow clicks. To share a common enemy, Orlan. You seek to help these kiss, and I would save my colony. We've heard of your encounter with Chark, far beneath Kaid Nua. I'm told Trivik Nerith will have the secret of Adra to, with which to strengthen its walls. What can I do to help? You are a generous solution. You must have seen them in my poor kin, the infected ones. What is it with. What is it you wish to know? What happened to the other Vithrak? An infection has claimed our people, and began when a scout came upon a strange plant, a radiant spore. It lived alongside in the spiders, each deriving sustenance from the other, a marvel of nature, something that we might use. We brought it into our territory, not seeing the danger. It was a matter of days before many of us had ingested the spore. Why did the other Viscerac lock you up? I hid something important to the resident crystal. There's a crystal, great, beautiful, enchanted, which grants us passage into the common ones. I hoped my kin would improve if only they were prevented from returning there, but it only made them desperate. Where did you hide the crystal? I pinned it in the net. To the south. The pillars, made of webbing, it is in the pod farthest from the door. Please hurry, the longer the spore keeps its hold upon us, the more my people suffer. What is a radiant spore? That is what we come to call the creature, for there is a light about it. I've seen similar beasts in the caverns, but never quite like this. It was grown to enormous size and little time. One center stalk vines like pillars, and see their own gifts against us. The connection between our kin is to spread its own words, its thoughts. Why did your people consume the spores? The spores come from their abilities. Many believed we might all be made more powerful. But what began as study became addiction, and it only took one to fall victim to the compulsion. Those who consumed the spores began to hear its words. And its instruction. We fought at first, tried to control, failed. Oh, you infected. I was cautious, but did not partake. I am a fourth by those infected to consume the spores. I hid myself until, until I could retrieve the crystal. You feel a faint pulse of shame alongside the admission. Where is the radiant spore now? Sealed it within the common half of the center of the territory. I could not let our people bring the spore to the colony at Mol. Mold the school near. The door to the chamber is filled with a glitch. There's a crystal which held before that glitch resonates with a specific tone. That tone opens doors. Do you know what's happening to the miners? 
For a long time, we simply avoided the kit tunnels, but the infection has heightened my total power of a weaker mind. Infected ones project their thoughts, their awareness, upon themselves and scream soft bodies and have no clear what damage they do. It is madness. You feel the sweeping aura of regret from the vis rack. Leave. Well, we know what to do now, don't we? Leave and never come back. Why, lol? No, that's not what we're doing. Quest. Quest. Ah, uh, damn. I need to clean my back on that because then we're going to kill Vithrak. Oh. Let me follow the dialogue while dealing with cat diplomacy. Don't deal with cats. Lavaru, be on seat. Good job, everybody. Well, we're already broken in. Well. Ain't that special. And Sagani can level up now. Let's just do that. Um, Boxman. Extra accuracy against ranged enemies. Seems perfect for Fagani. Yeah. Good to go. Well, I think we're going over here, aren't we? Potentially, it could be considered a line from Firefly, but Do also, this. it's like... I think it's pretty legit. It's just a line. Doesn't mean it's not, it's just, I don't know if I see it entirely. Just like Mama taught me. Bet, she, bet she can, t yeah, of course she can. Did you see that? Yeah. Ain't no one steps. Just like Mama taught me. Come on, let's go. Right here. The devil of Karok. This thing isn't doing the job. Indeed. Be on okay, come on. My mind feels sharp as this is getting on my nose. It, we finally got AI Let's that tells go. them to do stuff. But if they're ranged, they're just gonna stand back and do nothing. How bad? I shall deal with. And I'm like, just get in there, my dude. Get all up in their grill. It's Use your powerful chanted spells. And hit him hard. Let's Bonk. Bonk him with your bonking stick. Deal with problems. Have a good time. Accidentally enter a dungeon, dungeon, dungeon without noticing. Got it done. There we go. Oh my god. You gotta see this. Look at all these traps. My eyes are peeled. You gained an item. An infestation of spiders trap added to inventory. That's unusual. Epic pranks <laughs> put an infestation of spiders in someone else's house. This! Wrapped up in a bundle of webs, you can see small, spiked Vitrak eggs. Periodically, they pulse with movement from within. Vitrak coming out! I don't want to kill the Vitrak. I really don't. It's just they keep attacking me.
It means they, that doesn't mean they don't get the empathy. But you gotta admit, any efforts we have to try and stop them attacking us is a, is a good thing. We're like, okay, please stop attacking me. And they're like, Kestel or Uplander, we don't trust you. You're in my house. I recognize that you were here underground first, so I'm not gonna kick you out, but at least don't open up with clawing my eyes out with, or trying to psychically dominate me. That's not fair. I didn't say yes to your psychically dominating me. In fact, you didn't even ask. I think that's most unfair, isn't it? What did I set my quick save to? <laughs> Look at that. Why? Because I think this is a hard fight. Look at those guys. And we need to start combat before we can use the... Yeah. As helpful as okay. it would be to cast right about now. If I didn't know better, I'd say I'm hallucinating. You are. There's flowering mushroom pulses and rides with life. Each sinuous movement shakes loose new colors of small, incandescent blue spores. The air is thick with them. You hear a muffled hum in the air, like a murmur of distant voices. Hello. You hear nothing but the creak of the radiant spores' movement. Let the fifth rack go. You hear nothing but the creak of the radiant spores' movement. A cat, one or two, inhale the spores or attack the radiant spore. Ah, yes, I can't talk to you. So what I'm going to do is just take a big huff of your spores. Oh, good, Baker. Did just quick say, I think we're going to make a big huff so we can talk to the Radiant Spore. Step forward in the cascade of spores and breathe deep. The air smells sweet, like you've stepped into a garden, but it leaves a pinging, tingling numbness in its wake. The world around you seems to tilt, colors shifting, sound falling away. Welcome! The spore's voice fills the room, as grand and overbearing as its pulsing form. Bruises, it talks. You hear laughter, laced with, uh, with amused contempt. Take more! You'll understand soon enough! The glowing stalk shakes, and another dusting of spores falls loose. Resolve. Get away from me! Rain spores words wash over you, ringing in your ears. You try to step back, but you cannot convince your feet to move. What are you doing to me? These questions do not matter. Breathe. Resolve 10. Resist. You struggle fiercely, feeling your head with silent screams. For a moment, the radiant spore is silent, expectant, as if waiting to see if you will be a threat. When it speaks, it seems pleased. Very good. Now, let's be rid of these pests. Confused. Even the resolve to like, no, doesn't help. Radiant Four always started this way. You gotta trust Radiant Spore. It's only got <laughs> your best thoughts in life. The dare is not having a good time. Because Slime Shadows is restoring health, and Adair has a restore health because he's a warrior, and another restore health because he's a warrior, he's got two ranks of it, he can survive and he recovers a lot of health quickly. Hey. Yeah. My mind. Let's go! Slime is no longer confused, so let's do the thing. <laughs> You're in the way, Slam. Got an arrow for this one. Atta boy. Legion's 
Got him. Hey. Well, take that, Radiant Spore, you giant jerk. Got some dang spores out of it, too. Table. A silver fight. A blunderbuff. What's in here? Ooh. You step past an old roost and enter the bar, following a maze through into the dark network and twisting the suggest. Retrace your steps to the caves. Retrace your steps and make your way back to the exit. Before that fight didn't happen. Make no, I think you're right. God damn it. Also, I did not think that would make us leave and we weren't unable to not leave. So we're gonna get another like loading screen in just a moment. Okay, sure that works. So, Mako's got a good point. I think we should head back in and make sure that, like, the Dank Spore didn't just pretend to die. Karen has said you have helped us. We are grateful. I think we might be okay. <laughs> How spory is it, is it in here today? Less spory now. Lovely. Well, isn't that a vision? We were just trying to help out, like, solve a single murder, and it turned out to be a spore's fault. This is why you can't trust fungus. Can't trust fungus. I cannot be killed in a way that matters. Alright, let's go. This way. Back to Terra. Hey, buddy, we solved the spore problem. Thank you. You owe me one million copper pieces. What? Where'd he go? Hey. The voices, they're, they're gone at once. Oh, God, jeez. Maybe they're over here? First, let's check that and get closer. Okay, big map. Fair enough. I should at least give you your crystal back and unlock the door. Alright. Hey, there you are. I walked past you, sorry. I mind the return. The Maltus. Maltus Quimir is safe. You've done a great thing, Orlin. I'll tell my people they're in your debt. Is that all? Alright. I'm gonna leech it down then, buddy. Ooh, potion, potion of merciless gaze. I like my gaze with mercy, thank you. Tiny spiders run across the web in droves. The throat of the Vifrak has been torn out and deep gouges have been scratched into his face. That sounds familiar. Oh, oh, look at here. Oh, look at here. Straight to the Vistrak torn out and deep gouges in the face is exactly what happened to the body up above. Minerals fall from the stalactite overhead have condensed in this small web. Clean water fall growing from the web and fall letters below. Interesting. Ain't that special. Trugs. Hey, good night. Good to see you. Hope you're well. On your mind. We saved another colony of Vithrak, which make us the most amazing people here. We've saved so many Vithrak. Alright, let's get out of here. Web and the burrow leads back into the dark system. Tunnels that span the distance between these caverns and the mines. Let's go back to the mines. You trace your steps and make your way back to exit. I bet there is something you can discover in here by going down the other panel, uh, like other passages. I'm not gonna. One, I'll get lost, to no one's surprise. And two, I don't know. It just seems kind of boring. It's like click the right text. Uh, without, with my incredibly poor ability to map, like have a mind map of where to go, I'd get lost real quick. We'd be walking in circles and it would be boring. Not do it. Oh, 
Hey, free boots. Come on, folks. Get moving. Let's get this done. Not sure what you and Issy is me dead, but everyone's livened up a hurry. Okay. I don't think it would have a paper to draw map and if the witness to probably get lost. Yeah, like that would work. I'm not gonna though. <laughs> I'm too lazy to actually have that happen in a video game anyway. Hey Gamel. Oh, I can't talk to you. Okay. Hey, it's me. Taking back to mine the back to their senses. Almost like someone smacked them all on the back of their head. What'd you find out there? I found a Vithrak colony beneath the mines. Malicious fungus infected their people. The spores behind all these attacks and disappearances. Well, can't say I would have guessed that one. I'm just glad you put an end to this mess. Which leaves me with a decision of what to do with Gamel. Hey, chat! One, two, three, or four. One, Gamel wasn't in control of his actions. You shouldn't blame him. Two, whatever the circumstances, he's still responsible for Samet's death. Someone has to pay. Three, lie. The murder was entirely Gamel's doing. He deserves what's coming to him. And four, not my problem. Hey, chat! I'm pretty sure we're going to choose one. Because, like, too stupid rule? It's like, oh, I don't understand mind control. You know. <laughs> and three is just weirdly awful. <laughs> Golem King, welcome back. Yeah, four would make sense for your vote. Yeah, whatever. I don't give a fuck. Um. <laughs> Prune, how could you? Golem King and Trugs just like high five <laughs> each other with mean decisions. I think two is like whatever the circumstances. You may not be in control of your body and mind, but if you physically do a bad thing, you deserve to be punished for it. What? That's ridiculous. Anyway, one. I guess you're right. We'll keep an eye on him for a little while and see about sitting loose. Start with minor negative. Yeah, well, whatever, I'll take the money negative, you crazy bunch. Take this. Take of gratitude for all your hard work. It's the least I can offer. Bye. Hey, Nesta. It's impressive how quickly Starwood reopened the mines and got her operational. She looks around approvingly. I'm more concerned about this incident involving some of the miners. Something that was causing erratic, sometimes violent behavior. Let's say you solved the issue. Care to enlighten me? Are you not right there? We just went through this. A giant spore in the Vithrak mines is mind controlling the miners as well as the Vithrak. Spore's dead now. But the Vithrak are not, correct? She thinks a moment. I'm going to make a note of their presence in my report. Defiant fail and see something against the squad of Crystal Knights protecting the mines as part of the pay agreement. No offense to Star Wars militia, of course. We don't like pop, so I'm actually going to choose one. I strongly suggest you leave that part out of your report unless you want to fall into a deep dark hole on the way out. Well, I guess I forget to mention the Vithrak then. Uh -huh. So one more stop I must make a white forge. I like to the skills of the smith applied to the forge. See you there. Yeah, right? Yeah. The Celebrant Sturge. <clears throat> The violent deaths of two Magronite priests at the Avendua Bridge generated grief and outrage at Godhunter Citadel. It did not take long for Jurants to discover that the radical raids there were responsible. Two wizards had placed the curses that killed the priests, but they were backed by dozens of raids there veterans in the Saints' War. As the wizards had no interest in negotiating with Durants or the Magronites, a battle erupted, much of it running over the same field that saw combat during the war. In the end, the wizards were killed and the remaining raid sarans were routed. The priests that had died in the initial attack were buried near the bridge, and the ceremony gloves of the senior priests were priests were given to Durance and tanks. Honestly, that would be better if we sent someone else. Oh well. Lots of drugs here, giving prestige and nothing else. Whatever, dude. He doesn't somehow know, that, despite the shouting crowd, that the forge is blockaded. Yeah, Maker, you've got a damn good point. Look, maybe he'll walk up and get killed. Who knows? If nothing else... I can't believe they're letting that animal go free. Oh, fuck off. Anyway. I think we can... Well, someone to kill the long watch fall. Just wander over there and get a bounty.
We don't listen to crowds begging for death. If... <laughs> Mob justice is not really justice anyway. It's almost certainly a bounty. Oh, Frosties. Me too. I troll. <laughs> troll. No, yeah, don't here. Weird how quickly they will just stop attacking. They're like, yes, I'm fine with this. I'll just watch my friends die. Come on, fight. <laughs> Get him, Slam. My mind feels Stab. All right, you look. Come on. It's not serious. Me too. Good night, Baker. Good to see you tonight. We'll see you perhaps Wednesday night for the next episode of Final Fantasy 2. Otherwise, we'll catch you in the vibes, okay? Well, hunting bounty. There we are. Yeah, fire door. You're definitely not an enemy that's going to get back. And... Chalo! Chain Lightning is not my absolute favorite spell in a lot of games, but I think Chain Lightning is great. It's almost entirely uncontrollable. It goes off in the weird direction. It's very funny. Chain Lightning is... I loved it. Lightning Bolt in early editions of DD bounced on walls, so a lot of the time you'd go, Lightning Bolt! Zap, zap, zap you first. Hilarious. I also love having to get out of rulers so you can measure exactly where you're going to explode and die. Stormcaller. Kills whatever of enemies the Stormcaller to unbox the next level. Rest in the lair of a Sky Dragon. Where is there a Sky Dragon? My friends, you have not met a Sky Dragon yet, but there is one. But it deals quickly more damage and it's pretty good. So, Krat. Sagani has a slightly stronger weapon now. All because we beat up a druid. Of course. Now, a druid that deserved it, not any druid. That would be unfair. Back to Stolwit, then in a quest, then in a quest, and then it's off to the battery to see if we can get in, because there are a couple of quests there. And if not, we'll go straight to the Iron Flail. I helped Stalwart, right? This silly, hopeless place. Could work with battery, because we all owe you our livelihoods. I mean, I guess. Can he thank me in a way that isn't just giving money? I don't want money. We strictly have enough. We are a local lord. Give money to your underprivileged instead. Brought you fired on, Ted. That's a relief. Felt like that was bound to cause trouble, even if he was crazy. Here, this is for you. He hands you a rattling bag of bonies. I don't have any more bounties. Fine with that, my man. We did it. We hunted down enough people to exhaust a list of bounties. Do you feel like a hero? Yes. Those guys were evil. So much so that we went up to say hi, and they attacked us. Well and truly self-defense. Not terrible. We could be nice though. Say we can play a less violent game because we keep running into things and attacking them out of nowhere, and that that's pretty fair, right? Final Fantasy 2 is just less violent. Rescue Nester from the brigands outside Dogan's battery. Alright! <laughs> 
Me too. Withering strike. Weak in the dark. I think that war dog is going straight to death though. Let's try to cast leap on it. Or not. Alright, never mind. Hey, Alok before. Never mind. Before that spell goes off, let's sleep some actual enemies. Like, worried the war dog. Hey. Oh. It's difficult now, what with all of them taking a nap in the middle of combat. Also, you'll notice a couple of times the Ghani has actually hit with returning the storm from the new upgraded weapon. So that's fantastic. Just like Mama taught you. Mama taught you to stab people? Seal me. Me too. Me too. That was a close one. Nestor quivers with exhaustion. You are very much more adept at avoiding brigand ambushes. Why were they after you? Occasionally he was taking your attack for collecting. It's probably these these brigands made that assumption. It was the close one. You could help me fight them? Shake the head. I have more practice. I have much more practice at running, and besides, I've just gotten in your way. You, you had things under control. Yeah, let's go. See you at the West Forge then. A strange thing to just have out of nowhere. I guess it gives you the opportunity to, if she dies, hey. you fail the quest. But it's interesting that it's not that explicit, right? I'm going to do a bit of housekeeping. Because there are several grimoires that I'm not sure we've actually been through and made Aloth learn everything in them. It's not very responsible for our good little wizard buddy. Where? Oh, they count as weapons, don't they? Doesn't take long. I'm just taking a look through. A lot of them are going to be generic, and you can see fairly quickly whether you've got everything in them or not. Uh, relatively large purplish bus icon appears if you don't have it. Oh, that one. That's infused with final lessons. It's a different spell entirely. Also, it seems to have selected Slam Shadows, not Aloth. But I think I've found a part of the problem. Put him in Aloth's inventory and select him first. That might help. Not that. Anything but that. Quite literally. Very silly indeed. But hey. That's just a theory. Okay, we have Aloth selected. Look at that. Why should we do this? Oh, it allows us to customize his room while so we'll have more spells to choose. I think it's pretty interesting when wizards are actually interested in the art of learning new magic, magic discovering it from people and figuring out like how magic works. I mean, they're giant magical nerds, right? That's their whole conceit of their class compared to sorcerers. I'd want them to be giant nerds. And part of that is study. And a thrust of tattered veils. Alos, you need to learn to thrust appropriately. There. And now we'll actually check Alice Grimlai himself. And look, there's slots that we haven't filled. Oh, I don't know any six level. Oh, seven. Right, well, that explains it. Lovely. Hey. Thank you for your patience on that one, everybody. I do quite non sarcastically appreciate it. Crunch, crunch. <laughs> Simon brought the blue tea. Look at that. We can trust the Simon. Worker. The days are long and the work's hard, but the pay is worth it. Stand alongside your brother. You want oh. me to go back up there? After nearly losing my leg? You still got it, don't ya? That's mean. Hey, Wengro. The back of the Orland's head is a patchwork of singed green-brown fur and dark, scar flesh. She notices you and jumps back a foot. One of her staring eyes is cold, and the other is hazel. She flicks her left ear, which is a little more than a nub on her skull. 
at last. She relaxes. I think we found Horavius's mom. Ha! Took you for one of them red sarens. Then I saw you had all your teeth. Ha ha ha! He's shouting at you, but a friendly smile warms her face. She smells of sulfur and smoke. Okay, now, that's not quite as racist as it sounds originally. I think it's because he's referring to the fact that Heropius is missing an ear as well. <laughs> I don't think this is explicitly a, uh, all, all in a related, because I can't imagine, um, <laughs> I can't imagine them outside of my own context, because I am, in fact, closed-minded. I think that's it, they're just going, ha, huh, you're both missing ears, lol. That is what I'm choosing to believe. <laughs> I'm Flame Shadow. Hang on, gotta talk into my good ear. She yells even louder, swiveling her hairless but whole ear towards you. Now what was... say... Ain't I seen you somewhere? She scratches a bald patch on her cheek. You got one of those faces. No, no, four. Your mother has. No, I got it. You're the one who got us into this place. She snaps. She stumps the wall with her fist. And you fired up the White Forge. One there glimmers in her eyes. Must have been a real side up close. All that fire. She, she takes a deep breath. Imagine flames everywhere and rumbling so deep it rattles your bones. Sometimes I stand on the bridge to the mines just to feel the heat. She trembles with feverish enthusiasm. Oh, I keep wanting to see the forge for myself, but the blacksmiths won't let me near it. Don't know why. She scratches her arm. A clump of burnt hair falls to the snow. What are you doing out here? Oh, you know, clearing tunnels, blowing old barricades, just tidying up. She grins, showing all of her teeth. But soon, I've got to start testing the cannons. Her voice has dropped to a whisper, or at least her close, closest approximation of one. She claps her hands together and looks out at the high tower with nearly religious reverence. Is this about the Iron Flail? We held them off a few weeks ago, but they didn't run far. Set up a fort in the woods, and I hear they're working on some really fantastic siege weapons. Keep glow. There must be something you can do. <laughs> there sure is. She's practically dancing, her hands balled into knobby little fists. Once we have the heavy cannons, that is. I've heard they can hit a target from over five miles. <clears throat> I've heard they can hit a target over five miles away. Oh, I'd give my other ear to see that. Her expression melts into bliss. What's the problem with the heavy cannons? They're all the way up there. She points at a tower that punches through the snow bleared clouds. I, I sent a crew to the tower, but they came back complaining about Skuldrak and the other nasties. Nearly took Kulmar's leg off. Hmm. Skuldrak did, I mean. She blinks quickly. I could look into it. That'd be a big help. I'd hate to let those beauties go to rust up there. She twitches and fidgets like a drunk envisioning a tip. And anything you find up there is yours. Batteries full of treasures, and the West Tower has hardly been explored. Head through the door and up the stairs. That'll get you to that rampart. She points up to the dusted walkway. Yeah, Kulmar cleared the rubble before he took to getting himself conveniently injured. You should be able to work your way up to the cannons from there. Conveniently. Meantime, I'll check on our black powder stock. She gives you a smile full of jagged teeth. All right. Well, let's help this Olin who really loves explosives and fire investigate what's going on up there. Any luck with those cannons? No uh, rush, I mean. She shuffles her feet, clasping her hands behind her back. How do I reach the tower? Head through the door and up the stairs. That'll get you to that rampart. Yeah, Kulmar cleared the rubble before he took to getting himself conveniently injured. You sh no disrespect to these beauties, but they can't match the big guns for distance or power. Okay, can I use the cannons down here? This is essentially dialogues just clarifying things. I don't expect to learn too much more. This sort of stuff is actually good to include in your game if you can. Like, talk to the quest giver again and you can get a refresher on what you're supposed to be doing. Especially if the journal is just like, uh, go here. You can at least go here and say, hey, Wingro, what was I supposed to do? How do I reach the tower? Head through the door and up the stairs. Yeah, Kulmar cleared the rubble before he took to getting Play the dialogue again. It's not that injured. hard. You should be able to Tell me about the iron the They came out here a few weeks back and asked us to vacate the forge real nice-like. When we told them to turn around or we do them like we did their fellow Widewin, things got rough. They went to their fort, but they'll be back for sure. Darian sent a group from Stalwart to Parley, but they never made it back. She gives you a knowing look. Can't reason with Red Sarens. That's why we gotta get these guns working, so we'll be ready for them. What are you doing out here? I'm taking care of these lovelies so they can take care of us. She gazes affectionately at the cannons. 
He really liked explosions. Well, back in Stalwart, I learned everything Tana knew about black powder. And a few things she didn't. She beamed. Them she wasn't so happy about. She frowns, looking momentarily distracted. After what might have been a small mishap in the Stalwart mines, they sent me here to put my talents to better use. Farewell. <laughs> That's cool. Good character. Love it. Love a lady that blows things up. Hey, Lord Gar. Well met, stranger. He scratches his head. Wait, I know you. I don't want to crack this jelly jar in the first place. He laughs and claps you on the back. Well, in that case, well met indeed. Thanks for the job. He leans forward to shake your hand. As he does, you notice he's favoring his right leg, and his left leg is roughly bandaged. bandaged. I turn dog too long, or I'll get an earful. He glances over his shoulder. What happened to you? Bad hip that got worse after a night with cool Mars and rot gut. He laughs, but he's wincing too. Well, he'll just gotta fix the place up before anything else falls apart. Oh well. That's interesting. Some more detail going on there? Gonna make the walls even higher. In we go. From here you can access any level within the battery. Where would you like to go? Go to the Great Hall. Press 1. The game freezes like it's uh, like just died, but it starts loading. Look at that. We've explored none of this area because they've rebuilt it so well. The statue of Abaddon is mottled and tarnished, but each bolt and rivet appears crafted with the meticulous detail. Ain't that special? Sure is. Yoink! Hey, we've better found it before. Bubble, who are you? This dwarf gives you this dwarf gives you a quick nod as he smears the grease and soot from his fingers on his apron. Up a chain dangling from his ear sparkles red in the firelight. Hot. I know who you are. Wouldn't be in this place if it weren't for you. Rubs the chain in his ear, flashing half a smile. What can I do for you? What is it that you do here? Running excavation at the lower levels and everything else around here? Supplies, the kitchen, quarters. When you need something you come to me. I wanna see the stores. Let's get to it. Exceptional. Let's not keep the infestation of spiders, but... Yeah, it could be cool. Don't see anything particularly useful here. Plus three reflect on a helm? Yeah, not bad. I think we've got enough, though. Huh. We can see... Oh, these aren't even stealing. Let's if go. You say so. Yoink! Got it done. I love not stealing. Comes an old guard's key. Yes, please. Yoink! Heavy stones block the hole. Under the pillow, under the pillow, are a child's crude charcoal burn. Cots, this cot smells smoky, stained with black powder and ash. Needs the old guard's key. Ain't that special? Break into here. Get ourselves a fine blunderbuff. Some coins. Armor. Do not remove any equipment from the armory without the permission from Arms Warden Maroon or Captain Gregor. Joint! Hey, Dragon Iron Ingot. Nice. Just looting everything. We're amazing. The bronze picture of evidence stands over incense ash and rusted metal tokens. Wheels and levers are mine hard to place. Black powder. Handle with care! What? Can't fireball. Oh, rough. Oh, I guess we're fine then, don't worry. Hand me one of these. Quarter foot will do, but make sure it's not rusted. Yeah, well look, if not, Corbel should have something it'll work. Now, I wanted it here to the Great Hall, because I thought we were going to talk to our friend, right? I guess not. Oh well. Maybe she's up front? We'll find her later. I'll try not to forget. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe anyway, right? Hopefully we won't. I'd be very sad. I'd be very sad if we forget. Focus. Sure is good thing. I've always been able to push those, mon push those monsters out of the tower. Fine! Oh, yeah, that's true. Well, what we'll do... Leave us in a position where we know where we're about to go. Into this tower. Perfect, right? Perfect.
Well, that is that for tonight. What a nice, lovely little adventure. Oh, not quite, but close enough that they don't keep an eye on it. Yeah, good point. We've gone over a couple of nights for the last few. Maybe we should keep track of it, you know, and not finish at 10 past, right? We can wrap up early enough to write more. Yeah, well, Maker was headed to bed. Otherwise, um, I would have checked in with her to do sound, but we'll have to catch it some other time. I'm not going to begrudge someone to stay up to fix my sound issues. Well, hopefully, I'll catch her soon. Um, but yeah, I'll probably do some writing tonight. That's my plan, at least. Lovely little, uh, like, session tonight. We finished the Master Below. That's, like, one of the longest quests that is the main quest. We've secured our castle. That's fantastic. And all of you were here to join me. Everyone in the VODs, everyone in chat. Boy, is it fun. Thanks very much for joining me tonight. I'll see you Monday night. In two days time. Same time. Seven o'clock, at least my time. GMT plus 11 because it's now um, daylight savings. And then we will play some Final Fantasy 2. And I'll see you then. Good night, everybody.